Ah, where's my thing? There I am. Um, one sec. I'm really loud. How's that? Nope. Sorry. Oh, frick. How's that? Nope. I'm having really... I'm having severe problems with this today. Hold with me. Rest. Don't freak out. It was working seconds ago. Okay. I don't know. I'm really, okay, how's that? Figured it out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I am still having a really, really hard time with my Beacon mic and my Beacon Mix Create and how it all integrates with my OBS. So it's an ongoing issue. And no matter how many videos I watch or how to's or how to put it all together, fucking things, I just cannot seem to get it to work properly. So I apologize. Please let me know if it is too loud. I have once again been playing with the volumes and on the mix create on the mix on the beacon, what the fuck ever it is. It says, oh, you know, it should be up in this range. And then I find it way too loud for me to listen to. So I don't know. And then I try to turn that down and it says that it's turning up and so if anyone is watching, if anyone's logged on yet, which it doesn't look like they have, if uh, you can please let me know. I'll actually write this in the chat um, just so that I keep it regular. How, not who. Because once again, I cannot hear a blinking thing. Okay, deep breaths, relax, calm your shit. Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sard, and I am your host and narrator. Uh, what we will be doing today, just a moment, is we will be watching me fiddle around with this GD flipping microphone. How's that? That's about a lot better, okay. I can hear myself quite a bit better now. I hope that it's not too loud or too soft for you. Uh, if it is, please leave it in the notes or in the chat or wherever you're watching this because I just cannot seem to get it as loud as people um, say that it should be. I think listening to it back that the, my volumes are fine, but who the heck knows? Um, I'm just glad that it's actually recording this time and that it's picking it up. Because according to the Beacon profile thing that I'm, the actual app, that I had to restart my computer to get it to fucking work, uh, it says that it's not computing. It says that it's not coming in at all. But OBS says it is. So I don't fucking know. <sighs> okay, just a second. Deep breath. Let me get my crystals on. And it helps me be with my shit. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I wish I could start this over again, but I can't. So we're in for... We're <coughs> so we're here. Uh, 
if you don't, oh, let me do that one more time. Hello and welcome to the library. Welcome to our Sunday story time stream. Awesome that I got that out first try. Didn't even think of it. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am an audiobook narrator and podcast host and narrator, voice actor, all that fun stuff with the voice and the reading and the stuff. This little angel right beside me, this white cherub, is Yui. He is currently directly to the side of me and passed out asleep because we just got back from his first full weekend at the cottage and he swam and he ran and he almost got sprayed by a skunk but didn't. <laughs> Thank goodness he's a good boy and listens. Um, but yeah, so him and his sister have been running and playing and going nuts all weekend and so now he is asleep. And he has passed out. He's one of those um, ones. I don't know if you have um, if you have kids or dogs or animals, because I know some, a lot of other dogs are like that, but mostly kids. You know that when they get to that point where they're so overtired that they don't know that they're, that they're tired, so they just keep going, and you have to say no, like strap them to the bed. No, stay there, just sleep. And then as soon as their head hits the pillow, they're out. Hello, Ghost Wanderer. How are you doing today? How is your Sunday? I haven't just, I, don't, I haven't said yet, but happy Mother's Day to those who celebrate it. And happy random Sunday in May for those who don't. Uh, we do celebrate Mother's Day my, when, uh, when I remember. <laughs> um, but this was my first Mother's Day as a fur mom. <laughs> the fur baby mummy. So I got a <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Uh, I hope you had a good day. And if you didn't, if you did get in a fight with your mother, which is normal, <laughs> I didn't. We had a good day. But I know that some people just find this day absolute shit. And for to those of you who are watching this, I commiserate and I'm sorry. I hope you got through it okay. Um. But yeah, so I was just talking about how it was Yui's first ever um, full weekend down at the cottage. And he swam and swam. and But the water on the river is very, very cold. So the poor guy, he at one point he was shivering so much that he just had to lay down and shiver. <laughs> so I just told my nephew, run, get a, get a towel, get two towels. So he comes out, we wrap him up two towels. And I just happened to have the heated blanket already on, so I wrapped him up in that, and he just sat on my lap and shivered. <laughs> so, oh, poor baby, I'm so sorry. But he got the stick that he was going for. Hello, Ghost Wander. I'm glad your day is good now. Uh-oh. That speaks to drama earlier. Happy to be here. I'm so glad. Uh, one thing that I did want to implement of, because uh, I know last Wednesday... <laughs> I know last Wednesday we we more chatted than read, and I think um, going back and watching those chapters would probably be really irritating for people. So what I'm going to do is that when I start with a chapter, I'm going to read the whole chapter through, and then we'll talk in between, and I'll actually go back through the chat. So don't stop chatting, because I will go back and we'll address fucking everything. Um, but uh, I just think that that way I can almost, um, although I don't know how, <laughs> but I'm fairly certain I will not chat as much. It's okay. I really enjoy the chatting. I, I personally really enjoy it, and it adds for a lot better content. Um, to be honest, it's the weirdest thing. When I'm reading, it's like I get tired very quickly. But when we're chatting and reading and going back and forth and more chatting, I can go for a lot longer. So I don't know what it is or why. Oh, by the way, how are my sound levels? Is sound, everything sound okay? Is the music too high or too low or can you hear it at all? Let me know. I'm going to use you as my guinea pig. Did you enjoy I fucking loved the other memes. I really wanted to ask you if I could post on Twitter the one about um, the poison. <laughs> I desperately wanted to post that. I'm like, we would get so many more viewers if people could see what the story's about. <laughs> No music. Okay, that's what you sound like. Okay, okay, okay. This fucking thing. I you shut up, bitch. I don't know if you heard that system noise, but let me just see if I can. Okay, 
I'm going to raise it in increments. You let me know if you hear anything. And sure enough, doesn't the fucking music change? You bastards. Oh, no, wait. Never mind. The intro to it. The intro. The one where it's, um, where the guy thinks. Uh, wait, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. I won't post it on here, but I just, because I can't read it. Uh, Discord is opening. Is this? Can't hear the music. Well, I figured out why you can't hear the music. It's because there's no music on this page. So that's why. So we're going to fix that. Uh, let me just pull this up here. This one. My husband is super smart. Yay. My husband poisons people. Uh, I'm into it. Yay. Like that one. <laughs> I loved that one. I thought that was so good. <laughs> Although the, <laughs> the one started laughing at ghost joke. Viewers knowing it's going to be another hour pause. Like that's... <laughs> That one had me. I love that one. So yeah, if I can get permission, I'd like to post that one. I'm not sure if you'd. Let me. Let me. I'm gonna pull this music back down just because I think when we actually go to the pack page, that it might uh, pop up again, and I don't fucking want it. And I hope I'm not breathing too heavily into the mic. I was trying to figure I turned on the computer after being away for the weekend and you turn it on and the mic wouldn't work the dials wouldn't work nothing was fucking working other than my old system that's not beacon anything so who the fuck knows I need to take deep breaths I get too ex I get too wound too wound I'm sorry I'm really sorry but I have to know in okay Aw. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with chapter 13. Oh, let's, let's go over to the proper page. This one. Alrighty, so as I said before, I'm going to go ahead and... Where's Artie? Out there. Eh. That's okay. If you don't want your content shown, you don't want it shown, and that's perfectly fine. I don't mind at all. Um... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read chapter 13, and then we'll chat, and then we'll go on to chapter 14. Yes, that's what you want to say. Uh, I will apologize. I myself am too exhausted. I'm also exhausted. I too am exhausted. That's what I was going for. Um, so we are going to get through as much as I can. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, uh, how's the music in this one? Is it too loud? Again, let me know if the music is is too much, because this bitch be throwing me off. I have it at nine. I don't think I need to press that. Maybe a drink before we get started. I was almost late because I was watching the um, the uh, prosecutions. Uh, cross examination for Johnny Depp. Oh, oh, I'm. I have thoughts. Music is fine. I say a little. It's a little louder than I am. Okay. So let me put it down to like this. Maybe we turn it down just a tiny bit. Okay. I turned it down from 9 to 6. Is that still too much? If yes... There. Okay. We could turn it down. Is that enough or more? I can go more. Okay. I still myself cannot hear a damn thing. So, I have no idea how other VTubers are doing it. I almost honestly want to scrap my beacon mix and go back to the GXLR or whatever it's called because this this bitch just be a pain in the ass <clears throat> oh. Okay. okay is the music good now
you want it back up? I went from nine to six, but I can take it down again. Six, five to six, maybe. All right, we're gonna forget the music. Can you at least hear me? Okay now. Okay, but you can hear me okay now? Is it still clearer? This is how we do. We mic check, mic check one, two, mic check. Why must messages take so long? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, is my com You know, it looks like my internet is okay. No, my internet's, yeah, my internet's good. It's still clear. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead with this, and we're going to start. Okay, great. Good. Yay. Uh, I wish that I could make it so that the Yui on screen, like, curls up in, like, a dog bed. I'd like to get an artist to do that. But I'd also like to get an artist that will allow my avatar to frown, because it just doesn't... Unless I go like this. Then it's sad. But that's all I got. It won't let me frown. It's irritating. I frown a lot. I have a resting bitch face, naturally. Okay, I'm rambling. Chapter 13. Has the cruel and stubborn beauty changed her sex for me? Eh? Eh? Okay. Sure. The Prince of Dayu was the Emperor's eldest son and had been in the East Palace for three years. His biological mother, concubine Chen Gui, has been a favorite of the six palaces for many years, and is the same as the deputy queen. This time, on her 40th birthday, all noble ladies who have an, appoint ha who have an appointment will enter the palace to greet her and offer birthday gifts. <laughs> I know. The steward of the mansion's storehouse sent a list and said, All things in the mansion are listed here. As Madame has instructed, asking Xiaojun to please select a suitable birthday gift. Then Qingyu gave it a cursory glance and asked, The booklet that ma <clears throat> The booklet that Madame gave me said that the Eastern Palace had rewarded Master Hu with a pair of sheep fat jade white Rui. Why is it not in the storehouse? Jade Rui is a bangle bracelet, I believe. And sheep fat is... Oh, fuck off. Is a type of jade. It's almost... Yeah, let me... I am a huge fan of jade. I love my jade. I have a jade bangles and jade... I like my white jade. Let me put it up here. Just because you may not care. But I like... I like... Uh, okay. Oh no, it's not a bangle. Alright, let me put it up here. If you can see. Wow. So this is um I thought this was sheep fat here, this like yellowy one. Yeah, there we are. Jade mutton, this one. Can't get it any bigger. Without visiting a site. Do I wanna visit this? I don't know if I do. I don't think I do. But yeah, so it's it's a beautiful, milky, um, regular jade has like um, almost a texture with inside the stone. But uh, this sheep fat jade is very, I know, sheep fat. It's um, usually uh, called mutton, mutton fat instead of sheep fat. But not very many people know outside of, um, uh, how do I say, people who, <laughs> who know like... Uh, ancient Babylonian times type thing of mutton um, but mutton white jade is very almost pearlescent it doesn't have the same texture within the stone it's almost um, how do I say I had a, a white jade necklace before the chain snapped and it just disappeared 
Oh, this isn't this is Haitian jade. This is different. Oh no, she fat. Yeah. But no, it I don't know how to describe it. It's not pearly so much as it has a certain kind of internal luster, which is really, really, really pretty. And it was one of my favorites, but it costs too much too much to replace. Even now. Okay, why is it not in the storehouse? <laughs> There you go. Make a meme about that that I can share. <laughs> so make a meme about that. Sarah saying that she won't talk anymore. Goes on to give us an existential list of a, a, a rundown of white jade and its different properties. The manager said, answering shouting, this pair of jade Rui was sent to the madam of the war minister's mansion to congratulate his son on his wedding. Then Ching Yu asked again, And where is the thousand-year ginseng given to Chen Guifei? The manager smiled and said, Naturally, it was used to help young master. Lin Ching Yu nodded. I see. You can leave now. Before Madam enters the palace tomorrow, I will have a gift prepared for her. Leng Shi's only requirement for the gift was that it be of equal value. The Nananhu Mansion can neither be lacking in respect of the Changui Fei, but neither could they be seen as trying to integrate themselves to her. Especially since the Nananhu Mansion and the Empress have even had a relationship by marriage. Things were becoming more and more delicate. The Empress actually had a son who was born mentally challenged. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was unable to inherit the throne and was also unable to obtain the Emperor's favor. All this time, he has been kept in the temporary Imperial residence. The Empress has always been anxious about her son, and naturally, she held a grudge against this mother and son pair. Although the Empress was far less favored than the Gwen than Chen Guifei, she was still the mother of the country. While giving a gift to Chen Guifei, the Nananhu Mansion still had to keep in mind the honor of the palace. The various twists and turns defied simple explanation. I could never be part of the Imperial Palace like that. It's too much work. That's a lot of effort. <clears throat> like I'm I'm siding with Lu Wenchang on this one. That's too much fucking work. I don't want to care about the politics. Lin Qing Yu first selected a batch of gifts from the list and ordered the servants to move them into the Blue Wind Pavilion to let him go through them and choose. Liu Wenchang saw that the room was filled with gift boxes of all sizes and asked, What are these? Lin Ching Yu said, Chen Guifei's birthday gift candidates. Mm. Chen, Chen Guifei? Liu, Chin, Liu Wenchang had a rare frown on his face. The crown prince's concubine... The crown prince's concubine mother? That's her. Liu Wenchang's face changed slightly. When did you get involved with the Eastern Palace? Lin Qingyu told Liu Wenchang about Lang Shi asking him to prepare the gift. Liu Wenchang still seemed uneasy and asked, So you won't be going to the palace or seeing the crown prince? No, Lin Ching Yu said suspiciously. You don't even, you don't ever care about other things, but how come whenever the Eastern Palace is mentioned, you have a, such a big reaction? Liu Wenchang hesitated for a moment and smiled. That's the current crown prince, the future emperor. Is he not worth me making a senseless fuss over? Lin Ching Yu said, the Empress is not your... 
and at her breath all of a sudden. The Empress is your aunt, and the Prince is Dimu. Dimu, yeah. And the Prince is Dimu. Looking at it from that point of view, the Crown Prince is still your cousin. Luan Chang snorted. I do not wish to have his, this greatness. Huh? Oh. I do not wish to have this greatest of the greatest as my cousin. The topic about the Eastern Palace ended here. Liu Wencheng was a bit preoccupied, but he still didn't forget to remind Lin Qingyu. Since the Langxi dares to use Cheng Guifei's matter to create an issue, she probably feels that the time is about right. Lin Qingyu nodded. Don't worry, Master Hao. I do have my own sense of proportion. The next day, Liang Shi got up an hour earlier than usual. Liu Momo waited on her to change into her court clothes. She asked, Which courtyard? Oh, sorry. Which courtyard did Master Hu stay in last night? Liu Momo said, Pan Ying. Yeah. Pan Yinang's courtyard. Ah, that sounds weird. Yang Shi's expression sank. It's her again. Liu Momo persuaded. Pan Shi comes from a humble background, and even if her womb failed to live up to expectation, she is not worth Madame getting angry over. It will only be giving her face. That's true. Yang Shi looked at the woman in the mirror. Still attractive, though getting on in the years. She said, Master Hu could be, should be coming to breakfast soon. Go to the Blue Wind Pavilion and invite him to come here. No matter which concubine's courtroom Nan and Hu stayed in for the night, he would always have breakfast with his wife the next day and listen to her talk about some of the mansion's affairs. He would not involve himself, but he had to at least keep abreast of what had been happening. During the meal, Liang Shi mentioned that the matter of the Cheng Guifei's gift, Nan and Hu said, This may seem like a trivial matter, but in actuality it has big implications. Where is the birthday gift you prepared? Show me. At this time, the servant came in and announced, Master? Madam, Xiao Jin is here. Liang Shi said with a smile. Speaking frankly to Master Hu, there are many things that need to be done to run the household. I am getting on in the years, and it is inevitable that I am unable to do as much as I'd wish. I assigned some things to the Qing Yu to take care of. As a matter of fact, he has been taking care of the accounts for a period of time. I have also instructed him to handle the matters of Chen Guifei's birthday gift. He is now, presumably, just for the matter. He is now... He is here now, presumably, just for this matter. There is still quite some time before the morning court. Why not stay a while and see what he has prepared? Nan and Hu nodded. Let him come in. Lin Qing Yu walked in followed by Feng Qin and Huang Tong. One was holding a book, and the other was holding an exquisite gift box. He greeted the two of them in accordance with the rules. Nan and Hu looked at the gift box and said, Is this the gift you have prepared for Cheng Guifei? Yes. Asking Madam and Master Hu to please take a look. Lin Qing Yu gestured for Feng Gestured for Feng Qin, presented the box. Oh. Lin, sorry. Lin Qing Yu gestured, and Feng Qin presented the gift box, her hands trembling slightly. Looking at the shape of the gift box, it seemed to be something long. Nan and Hu opened it and took a look. It turned out to be a well-rolled well painting. Nan and Hu ordered someone to unfurl the painting. 
His face suddenly changed, and he got up in anger. Impudent! Liang Shi pressed down on the corners of her lips. She stood up with him and said in disbelief, This painting was made by a master of the Xu dynasty 500 years ago. This is an heirloom passed down in the Hu mansion set in the heirloom passed down in Hu mas master Hu's family. How can you take it to give as a gift? <laughs> this painting is priceless. His Majesty loves this painting very much. He has ordered me numerous times to bring this painting to the palace so that we may admire it together. It is because of the celest. Eh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna change it. It is because of the favor he shows to his ministers that even when I offered to give him th this as tribute, he never accepted it. And now you are going to take it to Cheng Gui Fei, the crown prince's concubine mother. Nanan Hu slammed his fist against the table. Towering with rage, he said, There is nothing his majesty fears more than ministers getting too close to the crown prince. You clearly know this... What calamity... You clearly know what calamity you nearly caused. Lin Qingyu held back his gaze and said, Qingyu wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare? Nanan Hu was already furious. Who does not know that the son of the Imperial Hospital Panguan is matchlessly intelligent and exceptionally clever? I think you did this intentionally to put the Nanan Hu Mansion in danger. Hope that's not too loud. Liang Shi said, fearful at what might have happened. Fortunately, Master Hu looked at it beforehand. Otherwise, in the future, if His Majesty were to see this painting at Chen Gui Fei's, who knows what sort of suspicions he may have reg regarded Master Hu and the Crown Prince's relationship. Liang Shi glanced at Lu Momo, signaling to her that it was time for her to add oil and vinegar, as she was wont to do. Unexpectedly, Lu Momo's face turned flustered. Her finger, her, her figure and posture were as extremely up unsightly. She asked in a low voice, What is wrong with you? Liu Momo whispered, I think I was bitten by some bug. My body is unbearably itchy. What was this compared to the critical juncture they were facing? Lang Shi said, displeased, Master Hu is still here. Pay attention to the etiquette. Liu Momo forced herself to endure. Yes. Lin Qingyu said calmly, Master Hu, I have already married into the Hu Mansion. There is no retreat for me. Should the Nanan Hu Mansion run into misfortune, it will be difficult for me to escape responsibility. The reason why I chose this painting is because of the Madam's command. Liang Shi's eyes widened, and she exclaimed, What nonsense are you talking about? It was the madam who said that the gift to be given to Chang Gui Fei must be of equal value to the rewards she has bestowed. Although Nan and Hu and Liang Shi were not husband and wife by the first marriage, they have been sharing the same bed for many years. Lin Qing Yu was just a daughter-in-law who he rarely saw. At this moment, he naturally believed Lang Shi. What she said was right. You do indeed need to prepare a gift of equal value. But then what did you do? Liang Shi, uh, Lin Qing Yu said, The crown prince once bestowed a pair of sheep-fat white jade ryu to the master Hu. It is too, uh, this too is a relic from the previous dynasty, and would be considered priceless. Its worth is equal to this painting. What sheep fat white jade? Nanan Hu said sternly. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince has never given me anything of the sort. 
Liang Shi thought intently. I don't remember such a thing either. Lin Qingyu frowned. He hasn't, but it was written in the booklet Madame gave me. Huan Tong. Huan Tong presented the book. Nan and Hu quickly scanned through what was written, and his eyes grew colder. He threw the book to Ling Ching Yu. Look for yourself. Where's the sheep? Where's the sheep fat white jade you said? Ling Ching Yu tilted his head to avoid it. Keep. Oh. Oh, two. I just. Okay, just. Okay. Lin Ching Yu tilted his head to avoid it. He picked up the ledger and read through it. Indeed, it is not here. Nan and Hu pointed to Lin Ching Yu and said, What else do you have to say? Liu Momo was still struggling with the abnormality of her body, and she couldn't get a word out. Liang Shi had noticed, but to say... Liang Shi had no choice but to say herself, Ching Yu, what was it going on with you? You lost the pages of the ledger twice, and today... Oh. Nan and Hu said, The ledger? What ledger? Liang Shi said, It is no big matter. There is no need for Master Hu to concern himself about it. Tell me! Liang Shi had no other choice. She was forced to tell him everything regarding the ledgers. Nan and Hu was even more furious when he heard this. He decided that Lin Qing Yu had done everything deliberately. Bring me the rod! Lin Qing Yu swept his eyes over everyone and said slowly, There is no sheep fat white jade Rui in the booklet, but I clearly remember that there was. Why is that? I also remember that there it wasn't a single page missing from either of the two ledgers. But when it got to the madam, they were missing a page each. Why is that? Liang Shi blurted out, Naturally, it's because you're in proper care. My improper care? Lin Qing Yu smiled softly. Could it be that someone deliberately took those pages away? Ching Yu! Matters have already reached this point, and you still want to implicate others? Liang Shi shook, his, shook her head. With such poor character, you are not worthy of Wan Cheng, let alone being Xiaojin of the Hu Mansion. Just as she finished speaking these words, a thud was heard. Liu Momo, who'd been standing to one side, suddenly fell down. The crazed woman writhed on the floor, tearing her clothes, raving, raving, spewing from her mouth. It was terribly frightful. Before anyone could react, Feng Qin, behind Lin, Lin Qingyu, also fell twitching. She was a girl, after all, and she bit her lip, trying her bet hardest to refrain from pulling her clothes. However, she kept hitting the ground with her head, boom, 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 like a death knell hurrying her to her death. Everyone present was terribly scared. Several of the servant girls screamed in fear. Liang Shi, who was closest to Liu Momo, froze and couldn't even move. She stretched out her hand and said in horror, Master Ho! Lin Qingyu said, the pages of the ledger and the booklet went missing in the Blue Wind Pavilion. So naturally, this was done by someone of the Blue Wind Pavilion. In order to catch this person, young Master Hu ordered me to expose the page where the sheep fat white jade Rui was written into a special type of was written to a special type of poison. Once the skin comes in contact with this poison, One's whole body will be itchy and covered in sores. Although it poses no threat to one's life, one might just wish they were dead instead. Before that, I repeatedly warned the servants against touching the booklet that Madame sent. 
that someone from the Blue Wind Pavilion has been poisoned is to be expected. Lin Ching Yu paused and glanced lightly at Liang Shi. But I didn't expect that Liu Momo, Madam's most trusted aide, would, be, would also be poisoned. Nanan Hu was a wise man. Stringing together the previous coincidences, he already understood. He turned his head to look at Liang Shi. Liang Shi was dumbfounded. Master Hu, I don't know anything. I don't know what's going on. Hitting upon a plan. Hitting on a. Hitting upon a plan in desperation, she retorted with a countercharge. Lin Shi must have deliberately poisoned them to frame me. Lin Shi, how could you possibly have let me down? You have. Re re you have resorted to such cruelty. Lin Qing Yu sneered. He walked up to Feng Qin and looking down at her asked, It's unbearable, isn't it? Feng Qin had bitten her lips into bleeding. She struggled to say, Xiao Jin, please. I can give you both the antidote but I want to know the whereabouts of those missing pages. Understand? Liu Momo had already scratched her sleeves to shreds, revealing a large part of her arms covered with sores. It was a ghastly sight, and it sent a little maid who saw it retching. When she heard the word antidote, she couldn't attend to anything else. Madam, Madam, had me burn them... Liang Shi shook her head, still quibbling. No, Master Hu, I, I didn't. Lin Shi, this, this confession under torture, you can't believe him, Master Hu. Lin Qing Yu said, If Master Hu is unconvinced, you can question the manager Wong in the accounting office. He hasn't been poisoned yet, and he is sober. With Master Hu's impartial and incorruptible means, you will surely be able to find out the truth. Nanan Hu closed his eyes and said, Come drag these two crazy women away. After Feng Xian and Liu Momo were taken away, the room grew silent. The servants were afraid to even breathe too hard, until the steward of the Hu mansion reminded Master Hu, you should go to court, and Madam too should head to the palace. After such a commotion, Liang Shi's hair bun was scattered and her makeup was also spent. The mistress of the household cut a very sorry figure, and she had lost face. Nanan Hu said, voice low, Go quickly and freshen up. Choose a gift to give to Chen Guifei. As for the rest, we will talk about it when I return home. After speaking, he walked away. After Nanan Hu came back from the palace, he personally and privately questioned Manager Wong of the accounting office. No one knew all the facts and what had actually happened. The people of the mansion only knew that the madam knelt all night in the ancestral hall and fell ill the next day. In order to let her recover from her illness, the master handed over the affairs of the mansion to Lin Shi Xiaojin and Pan Shi Yinang. The results of this matter were not much different from what Lin Qing Yu expected. Nanan Hu paid particular importance to face and Liang Shi as his wife, after all. On the surface, he would not do anything to her. But everyone knew that the power in the Hu Mansion was about to change. After this incident, Liu Wan Chang's body gradually recovered, returning to the point where he could get out of bed. The medicine he drank every day also changed. Hua Lu gave him a de the decoction, and smelling it, he could tell that it wasn't his usual medicine. Dr. Zhang changed this prescription. 
Hua Lu replied. No, this is Xiao Jin's medicine. Nu Wan Chang heard these words and suddenly sprayed out the medicine he had just taken. <sighs> then Ching Yu came into the room just in time to see the scene. Laughing, he said. You can't even drink medicine anymore. Liu Wan Chang had a coughing fit, and Hua Lu was busy cleaning up again. Lin Qing Yu never showed mercy with his words, but he walked to the bed and sat down, stroking Liu Wan Chang's back, mollifying him. Liu Wan Chang smelled the very faint smell of parchment and ink on his body, mixed with the fragrance of medicine. He seemed like some medicine-picking immortal straight out of some book. Because Lu Chang was too lazy. Too lazy to do anything. Too lazy that when he does things, he often ends up in a daze and finds himself observing the people around him. He has mastered the ability to weigh a person's words and observe their facial expressions. For example, now... He could sense that Lin Qing Yu was in a bad mood. The feeling of coldness surrounding his whole body could make people retreat three days' march. He didn't dare be rash. He asked cautiously, Qing Yu, why are you changing my medicine? Lin Qing Yu said lightly, Why do you think? Liu Wencheng waved at Hua Lu to leave and then asked him with a low smile, Do you think I'm taking my sweet time dropping dead? Lin Qing Yu sneered. Yes. Lin Qing Yu, Liu Wencheng let out an, Oh, and picked up the medicine bowl, drinking down all the medicine in it. Lin Qing Yu's brows furrowed slightly. And why did you do that? Liu Wencheng licked the corner of his lips and said, If you really wanted to poison me, you wouldn't have waited until now, let alone let Hua Lu know about changing the prescription. You think Dr. Zhang's prescription is no good, so you changed it to a better one for me. Lin Qingyu suddenly stood up. You think you're so clever. Drink it if you want, don't drink it if you don't. Liu Wen Chang grabbed the hem of his clothes to prevent him from leaving. Are you angry again for the umpteenth time? No. Seeing you puts me in a bad mood, that's all. Liu Wen Chang earnestly thought back on what he had done recently. Innocent and confused, he asked, What did I do wrong? Then Qing Yu remained silent as he thought. Liu Wen Chang was right. He has never said that he wanted to live longer, that he would not be able to participate in this year's Imperial Medical Office's examination, was because he himself had momentarily been overcome with a bout of soft-heartedness, of foolishness. But if he admit, but if he missed the exam this year, he could still take the exam three years later. But Lu An Chang only had this little bit of time left. When a person dies, there's nothing left. Then Ching Yu's tone was a little slow. This prescription was given by my father. I made improvements according to your situation. It can't save your life, but it can make you live for half a year longer and make your last days less painful. When the time comes, you won't cut such a sorry figure. He has met many pe people driven to the brink of death because of illness. No matter how much dignity they had before, when that time came, none of them looked very good. They could not accomplish their day-to-day -day activities by themselves. They had to rely on others for everything. Lean as a rake, ashen and beaten, waiting until their oil ran out. People like Lu and Chang shouldn't wither away in such torment. However, 
Luan Chang didn't care whether he died in torment or not. You said, I'll live half a year longer? Lin Ching Yu lowered his eyes, not looking at him. Yes. Liu Wen Chang's eyes moved slightly. His Adam's apple rolled up and down. Ching Yu. He called out his name and fell silent. It made Lin Ching Yu feel embarrassed. Don't get me wrong, Lin Ching Yu said. Human life is the most important thing. The virtue of saving a life is worth more than a thousand gold. Since I'm practicing medicine, I can't stand by and watch an innocent die without trying to save them. Li Wen Chang spoke again, his voice a little muffled. But you can't save me. I know. But as long as I try my best, I will have a clear conscience in the future. Liu Wencheng laughed. His lips curled slightly. His eyes were bright, even beautiful. But the words he said were still infuriating. Ayah, ayah. Has the vicious and merciless beauty turned bent for me? Lin Ching Yu couldn't hide his disdain and refused to concede. Young Master Ho really does think too highly of himself. Li Wenchang stood up straight, leaned into Ching Yu's ear, and said softly, Ching Yu, thank you. Lin Ching Yu wasn't used to his sudden approach. His expression, as cold as Bing Ling's face, was stark, was shaky under the eaves, and he said, Do you want to drink this medicine or not? If I don't drink it, wouldn't I be betraying your good intentions? By the way, Luan Chang seemed to remember something important. Can this medicine make me carry you? Lin Jing Yu didn't understand why Luan Chang was so entangled in this matter and raised his eyebrows slightly. You really want to be able to carry me? Luan Chang nodded. I really want to. Lin Jing Yu sneered. Don't think about it. It's impossible for you in this life. Father's note, if you can't do it in this life, let's do it in the next. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's Yui. He's barking because his sister's barking downstairs. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Look at that sweater on. But yeah, it's so cute. It is so cute. To see them, I, I wish that I had edited this better and that I had seen where there was the page break so that I could have paused because I felt like there was too much, there was a lot of heavy emotion um, or there was, a, it was a very different emotion from when he's poisoning people versus to the cutscene and then where he's interacting with Liu Wenchang. But I really like the juxtaposition between the two versions of Lin Ching Yu. So you have the version where he shows him like the self for everyone where he's like I'm gonna poison a bitch and cold and distant and and I don't care that you're rolling on the ground in agony and then he goes back to Luan Cheng who he proclaims he actively dislikes which is a lie and but he's rubbing his back and making him medicine and you know I can give up however long of my life that he has left before I go on with my own ambitions and yeah that was that was really cute I love the two of them together <laughs> of course Lu Wencheng has to ruin it but Lu Wencheng is such a millennial <laughs> I feel well not a millennial but a modern person it's so funny okay let me go back to <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was yelling too loud because in my microphone because I was fiddling with the levels so much it's really really loud in my own ears so I wasn't sure what I was projecting versus what I was hearing was in truth because the music is still um wonky I know it got emotional there <laughs> uh now the fact not even gonna die once and come back you're gonna die twice 
Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's like a day of the week thing, right? Three days, two nights. So, yeah. I wonder, though. Did he die? Because it's not been... I have no idea. I wonder if he died in his first life? But he had to, right? That's how you transmigrate. You have to die in the first life. Isn't that how these things work? I don't know. I, th I feel like that's how it's supposed to work. That you have to die. Three deaths, three lives? I don't know. I don't know. The real bitch would be is that if you get to your third life... You live it out with the person you love, pinching you, and then when you get to old age and you both die of natural causes, hopefully, um, if he goes on, if Lu Wen Chang keeps going, that'd be sad. I hate that. Why would you say that? <laughs> That's one thing that I never believe. When you see those, um, this is last life because I say so. <laughs> Get out of there. <laughs> Plus, I never believe or understand. I could never understand a person who wishes for immortality. Because that would be... That would just be shit. That'd be more of a curse than a wish. That is not something you want. Like, no. Give me death. Um, yeah, he needs to carry him. I believe, because remember, his second life is, he's as a general, right? <laughs> you know. You know Lu Wenchang's just gonna, he's gonna have him, like, up on his fucking shoulder. And just carting him around. <laughs> And you put me down or I'll stab you with my acupuncture needles. Like I can imagine a scene like that. And that'd be that would that'd be so good. <laughs> I swear I'm picking up read up on my past messages, friend. By the way, you're the only person I know that can appreciate the fact my cat's name is Lan Jen. <gasps> is it really? You didn't okay, you need to post a picture of the kitty. In the pet share file, um, page of the Discord. Insanity is definitely something that will happen. Things like no more. Hands down. It has to. Yeah, what is, um... Oh, have you watched the anime Reign of Kings? Or, uh, no, Ranking of Kings. That's the one. Really good. I did not expect it to actually be as good as it was. But yeah, Ranking of Kings. And you have the one character, I'm not gonna spoil it, character that's immortal and dude goes batshit crazy and you can understand why but yeah let me see here, I can't believe you named your cat Lan Jen. that's so good second time's gonna be worse bro my cat's been not even gonna die once in a while second time's gonna be worse how do you think it's gonna be worse? I think I think the second time won't be as bad as the first because I feel like I feel like with the first one, Lin Qing Yu won't know that he's coming back or won't believe that he's coming back or like that'll be the end. So I think for the sadness for Lin Qing Yu would be worse. I would think than if if he dies or when he, I shouldn't say if when he dies the second time. We know that he's a general, so I don't. I'm assuming he'd go in battle, but I wonder if you would hear that and go, "Okay, so where's this bitch gonna pop up next?" You know what I mean? I've seen episode up to episode thirteen of Breaking of Kings. Yeah, because thirteen goes into. Yeah, it's a. I was really impressed by Ranking of Kings. Actually, it was interesting because of the. I'm not a huge fan of that art style. That um, I can't remember what cartoon, and it was a cartoon. It reminded me of with that art style, but the themes in it 
and the story of it were really, really good. Um, and the way that they pro portrayed it and how grown up and adult and it the storylines are, I was really impressed by. The Crazy King. Which one's the crazy one? Which one would you say is the crazy one? Would it be the Underworld King? Because he's... That, that bitch's not crazy. He's sly as a fox. The style charmed me after time. Yes. I thought this... I felt the same thing. Although I... I was, I was sitting there watching it and it's one of those ones where I... I... My mom just happened to come in. She's like, oh, what are you watching? And she, she, she sits down and she goes, what the hell are you watching? <laughs> okay, miss, I can't watch without romance. Yes, I agree. I agree. Um, watching without, I'm assuming what that what you're saying is that you can't watch an anime that doesn't have romance in it. No fucking way am I watching Demon Slayer. <laughs> I think I think I think I just used my inside voice outside. Um I watched Demon Slayer. I watched the first season and I think possibly the second. I watched up to him meeting the rest of the Demon Slayers. That's what I watched up to. Um I liked the art style. I like the story of it okay. I thought the story was out, honestly a little recycled. I felt that, like, I'm watching it, I'm like, hey, I've seen this before. Haven't I seen this before? And it was like at least two other an animes mushed together. Um, uh, yeah, so I liked the art of it, and the characters are cute, but I just feel like there's. It's just season one. I just, I, you know, I'm of the opinion, I know, I know, but I'm of the opinion, just opinion, that Western culture really likes animes that they can pick out different characters and side with that single character and make those single characters relatable. And so we tend to find one thing that has a lot of bright colors and fun voices I know I'm sorry and and market the shit out of it I'm sorry I'm sorry um it's not I will say this I think that it's better than if I was going to rank the top three most hyped Perhaps not overdone, but most hyped animes in the West right now, number one, in order of goodness, I have to say, in order of goodness. Uh, wait, before I say this, I can never remember the name of the third. Let me just pull this up here. Uh... And don't. Don't leave me just because I'm, just because I'm saying things that we don't like. <laughs> don't leave me. I'm into Demon Slayer for the emotional stuff personally, and if it gets emotional and if it has a better, deeper storyline as it goes, as the seasons go on, I would be all for it. I just I really like something that has depth, and for this I could, I could almost predict the storyline of where it was going, and then it did. So the demon's backstories get me. That is so fucking true. That was my favorite part. My favorite part of Demon Slayer was not the Demon Slayers. It was the demons. It was every single time the bad guys, they were my favorite. But then it takes a Game of Thrones twist that, okay, here you love this character now. You identify. You, you They're great now. And you wish that you could see them go further. By the way, they're now dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it kind of took that Game of Thrones twist. It's like, oh, we're going to make you really love them. And then die. So I, I found myself doing the exact same thing. Getting attached to the demon's backstories and characters. Yes, the main character is super sweet. I do like Tenjiro. 
but he reminds me of every single male protagonist to come out of anime for the last like five years or so. Oh, more than five years. Like, tell me he does not remind you. He has a bit of Deku, a bit of Naruto, right? Like, it's, he's, that's, that's his mix. <laughs> oh, we need, and, uh, you know what? A bit of, um, Kirito as well. So the three of them combined make up Tanjiro, which is, he's a very sweet boy. But I, I don't think he's original in any way. The demon's backstories get me every time in the manga. Never have I sobbed so hard over a character than in Demon Slayer. 100%. One of my most, um, actually was in Demon Slayer that I had one of my biggest of the year. That person deserves an Oscar for that acting. The acting and the art and the storytelling of it was so fucking on point. It was spectacular and I cried too, like a baby. But at the same time, I'm like, it's only the one. <laughs> you gave me one. Uh, let me just see this here. I'm trying to find... <sighs> I'm going to type in something mean and see if it pops up. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Just give me a list. I don't need it in numbers or reasons. Just give me a fucking list. Okay, so I disagree with a lot of these. No, I disagree with most of these. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> don't you love it when I'm looking at something else and then just randomly chatting? Uh, I disagree with that. Disagree with that. This fucking disagree with that. Okay, now you're just being an asshole. Um... I'm sorry, I want to read to you. You can cry like a baby more in the movie. Ooh. Like, Xena from Yona comes second to most- Yes. Yes, agreed. That's alright. I gotta- I gotta- I almost want to share how- s How shit this list is. They're going for the- I don't know, overrated animes is what they're touting this as. And it's all bullshit. It's all shit. You fuck you. Okay, they're saying that Sailor Moon is overrated. The fuck you say? And this is from someone who didn't even really like Sailor Moon. It's you assholes. Um, I shouldn't say that. I have issues with tuxedo mask. <laughs> Don't at me. I'm trying to find a single anime that I agree with to be on this list, and I have not yet. And I'm at number 24. You fucking assholes. No fucking way. They're saying that Yuri on Ice is overrated. Fuck you. Right. So that is not valid at all. I'm trying to find... I can never remember the damn name of this thing. I'm happy Demon Slayer is overrated because it's so shit. I like, I like seeing it blow up like that. It's true. It is always nice. I can remember being so upset. Inuyasha was my first anime. Like, I had seen and watched Sailor Moon and Pokemon and all those. But Inuyasha was my first real anime that I re recognized, you know, from Japan. Japanese voices, Japanese characters. That's right. Um, and the fact that I could never, ever find anything in stores about it. I could never find any pictures or stickers or posters or fucking keychains anything back in the day and that always really really bothered me uh, recent popular anime there it is number one <laughs> I knew it this is I didn't grow up in a country with anime so I missed all the classics you didn't miss much I'll, I'll say this right now um, actually, I, I want to say something, but I shouldn't because I currently do a voice for a character on this show, uh, or not on the actual show, but as, um, there's an artist redoing the manga, and so he has us voicing the characters, and it's getting a redo, and I just like this, <laughs> and 
I just like the actual thing so much, so I'm not going to say. And that's not outing anything because... Uh, I don't know that he's... Oh, this person isn't actually listing the voice actors for it, so screw him. So I don't know much about Sailor Moon and Inuyasha. I missed it. If you want romance, the most frustrating anime you could ever watch is Inuyasha. <laughs> Literally the most frustrating show in the world if you're looking for romance is fucking Inuyasha. Only because... Only because you have to understand the Japanese culture in a fundamental way to get the romance out of it. So... What happened there? Did I go past it? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there. Um, so, like, for Inuyasha, it is something crazy, like, 174 episodes. A lot, it has a lot of filler episodes. I personally love the filler episodes, because you're just, you're watching the characters go about, like, their day-to-day -day lives. Um, 174 or so, 175 or so episodes, and they are, from a Japanese perspective, uh, they are together. Inuyasha and Kagome are actually together, like, we're dating but we're not going to label it as anything, by, like, episode, like, 10 or so, if that, or before that. Um, I can, I know the actual episode where it's, like, where the Japanese, the, the undercurrent is, the subtext is saying that they're together, but there, no one's, like, no one's saying it outright. And then he's... He's... They... Oh! You know how I was saying before that... Uh, for Spirit Pact, the... The director changed what the author had put. Right? Or what the manga artist or whatever... Um, the original writer had created. And so the director wanted to change that. With Inuyasha... It was a similar thing, but here's the weird bit. And I've gone back and watched all of them over all of the episodes over again to see if this is true. In the original ver version that aired originally, like the ones that you stayed up late to watch, is different from the ones that they now say is the ones out of the library. Like the the actual episodes that you can find on Funimation and Crunchyroll and that different different things happened there was oh so i went back to look and apparently it was a fill they were filler episodes that this is how the directors or the production team thought that the story was going to go and it didn't but they aired that anyway and so when me my understanding of the story was vastly different then so what happened was they didn't publish they didn't keep the filler episodes for at least the beginning of it for Inuyasha's relationship with Kikyo versus Kagome and all the things that went on as a again the fucking love triangle I didn't even put that together but the fucking love triangles again and so when they were putting it out to stream yeah they just completely cut out those old episodes I'm going there was this really awful scene where you got to I got a different fucking Inuyasha. There was a scene, and I remember it because it had a, such a huge impact on me, because I <laughs> have very little trust in people in relationships. And there was a scene where Inuya or Kagome and Kikyo were being tortured by um, Naraku, Naraku, and. I love triangles. Fucking why love triangles? I hate love triangles. But Inuyasha had to choose between the two. And Kagome chose to give up her life so that Inuyasha didn't have to choose her over his first love. And fucking the guttural impact of that has always stayed with me. And every time I go back, I'm going, okay, where's this episode? I gotta find it. Like, is it, you know how you're going and you're like picking out a scab? Is it as traumatic as I remember? And they added torture scenes. That's exactly it. So, 
Inuyasha is trapped in this nightmare and Kagome and Kikyo are being tortured. Only it's not actually Kikyo, it's Naraku who's pretend who's pretending to be Kikyo, but it's really Kagome. And Kagome gives up her life so that Inuyasha can save Kikyo. And he fucking does. He fucking saves Kikyo instead of Kagome. The emotional impact of that was fucking traumatic. But that's not what the author wrote. So when they went to actually film these episodes, that episode is nowhere to be seen. I would love to see it again because, again, guttural impact. <laughs> like... I can still feel that wound. Yeah, it was. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's weird how they change it. But no, that's, and it's, <laughs> there's a bit of me that's slightly bitter now that Inuyasha is getting popular because it's getting a new, it's got a new spinoff with the kids. And I'm going, where the fuck were you guys <laughs> when I was the only one watching this show? And I couldn't nerd out about it, you arseholes. Um, so yeah, only slightly better that all these kids, they don't know what they got. Kids nowadays. They don't know how good they got it. I would have hated Inuyash after that. I had a hard time coming back from that, but I had such a deep love for Kagome. And I still do. I find her so relatable and selfless and incredible. I love Kagome. And yeah, so, but honestly, I think that's part of the reason why I don't watch the new version of Inuyasha with the kids, the sequel, just because I'm going, I've had to create a, <laughs> I've had to create a narrative in my head as to what happens with them after all of this. So I'm just going to keep my narrative. You, so you all can't fuck with me again. <laughs> There's no trust issues. <laughs> I do love Inuyasha, though. I am... When you figure out where Inuyasha is coming from, it makes a lot of sense. And when you forgive him because it wasn't... 2Ds. I know! I said... But yeah. Okay. So I raved a lot. Oh, I didn't show you the one that I feel is really overrated. Um, and it's super popular now. See? I don't know. I don't know. I honestly, if again, I'm, if it doesn't have romance and a specific kind of romance, I don't, then I watch it. Most popular. Where are you, you bastards? Anime trending? No, 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 no. Where is... Oh, are you serious? All that. I know you're in here. I just can't pronounce you. Finding the most popular isekai... Oh, no, not isekai. Not isekai. Highest rated nightmare. Is it this one? Where the shit are you? <coughs> Trapped in dating sim. I don't know. It's not that one. Are these my favorite popular sports animes? What are these? I love a sports anime. Oh! That's the one! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! How did you know? That's the one I'm trying to find! <laughs> did you just... I don't know why I could not remember that. Like, at all. Could not remember. Are you a big fan of that one, too? I'm sorry, ghost. I'm sorry. The biggest plagiarism scandals in the industry. One of them is Demon Slayer. Someone taking from Demon Slayer, not Demon Slayer taking from others. <sighs> but yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, in saying that, it's the only new popular one you wouldn't know the name of. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I found it entertaining for the first 
few episodes or for the first I think I, I watched I always give them at least a season so I found the first season entertaining but I didn't find the characters pulling me back in because I felt like I knew where it was gonna go um and also what is it wrong I didn't like, I wasn't as pulled in by their side characters as I wanted to be. I liked the other male, the guy. And I kind of liked the stabby girl, but I couldn't. This is how good I am with names. <laughs> um, the stabby girl, you know who I mean. But yeah, I, I don't know. I love the character design though. Hands down, love the character design. I don't know. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. I'm worried this is going to turn into a roast. <laughs> have side characters you don't like at first um i don't know i found i found the main character of demons i i don't want to say this because you'll get mad uh i found the main character of demon slayer to be a little Hollow? Hmm. Yes. Like that. Let me show you my favorite character on Demon Slayer. Because it was the shit, and I cried, and it was amazing. The acting was absolutely incredible. Actually, yeah, now that I think about it, my two favorite characters were were the demons. But even that, I'm I'm keep I I'd like to like it, but I'm not obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah. Let me find Oh, this isn't don't go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not gonna help you. Watch Demon Slayer on Netflix. Animation. IMDb might have it? I don't know. Um, but the three most popular, and I wouldn't... No, I'm not even going to go there, because I really like the one that I would say is the most popular, and I don't think it is overrated yet. Let me get that. Mm-hmm. Yep, my favorite Demon Slayer characters are a demon you haven't met and does he grow on me? He does grow on you. I just, I thought that the trope of him having a girly face on the other end was a little odd. Like, out of all the things you could choose, it just struck me as weird. Is that the one? I don't know. Now, I did like some, so I, I know a few um, uh, Japanese legends and stories and that, so I did really like how they incorporated some of the older legends into the stories. For instance, the training montage at the beginning of him learning from the spirits of past, like that one was really interesting. I liked that one. But at the same time, I also thought it went on a bit long. I'm trying to find where are you bitch I also don't like the bad guy. He's he's a real baddie. Doing that to children, you are souls. Is this the one? No. Maybe. Sorry, I'm looking at Oh no, this is the one. No. Time to get separated. Mysterious house where he encounters another demon and someone else. That one. Ah, uh, where's this? 
Because all the demons are so fucking relatable. Why would you do that? Why would you make it relatable for... Oh no, the pictures that they're showing aren't... Anyways, you know who I mean. Alright. <clears throat> I can go into chapter 14. It's 9.30 now. We did a dip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, that one. Yes, how did you know? That is exactly, that is both of them. Oh my god. Where do you want to go? Oh, pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who is, okay, who is the one? <clears throat> I could probably tell you who they're voiced by, but I can't ever remember the actual character name. Um... Who was the one? He was the white-haired boy at the beginning. He was one of the ultimate assassins. He ended up killing his entire troop so that they would stay with him always. What was that one? Yeah, but that was the spider demon, right? I think so. Okay, no, not, yeah, not the, I remember the spider demon mom. That was different, yes. No. Oh. He was the one that had that one had the most impact. <clears throat> I wish I could remember. I don't think it's that one. Was it the spider demon boy? Okay. Where he had that epic monologue and had you in tears by the end of it. Because you're going, there's no way you could ever convince me to be um to feel for this guy. There's no way you could ever convince me. And then they do, and you're going, holy shit. Rui. Mm. Sounds about right. No, I was gonna say about this. What am I even fucking looking at anymore? I don't even know. Okay, I'm gonna I gotta I gotta get out of this, because I don't even think I'm looking at the right fucking episodes. <coughs> oh. No. Not that. I say that I need to move on, and then I'm like, but it's still bothering me. It needs to find them. I'm not going to find them. Okay. <clears throat> yes, okay. See, that's what I love about Demonslayer. When they see the home. Nah, I hate this guy. Never mind, I'm sobbing for hours. Yes. And, and it's true. It, it, um, but I worry that that in itself is a trope, because now you know, you know that all the demons are going to have their own reasons, that they're not strictly 100% bad people all the time, which, you know, Buffy, but at the same time, the ultimate bad guy, I think he is the ultimate bad guy, and is the big baddie. But I just, I'm like, I feel gypped almost. It's like, oh, are you going to give me his tragic backstory so that I don't feel that, so that I feel like he, you try to make it so that his, his evil is justified? Not all of them. It's true. Not all of them. But the ones who give um, Tojiro the hardest time, would that be accurate? <clears throat> That reminds me, I've got to do, so we're doing this tonight, and then I have work tomorrow. Now, the big bad guy's backstory is funny. It's not just fine at all. Oh, that's good. That would make me more likely to watch it. I don't like it when it's almost like they insult the audience's intelligence by going, oh, yes, they did evil, but there's a reason that they were so evil. And that's not, he's very unreasonable. Okay, so yeah, that's good. That's better. You can't justify the bad guys all the time. That's one thing that really, really epically pisses me off in fan fiction. Like, fucking, like, I, I would almost would be willing to drop a fic if, when this happens, and it, but it happens so often that you can only ignore it as best you can, 
is when they're doing a rewrite and they try to save the bad guys too. No! Besides the point, that's not the point. Like, the best example is uh, Mo Dao Zushi and with Jin Guo Yu and how they always try to make, oh, well, he had a bad life. So if we can, is the Suwon syndrome fucking right? And they go, but they go and they try to make it, oh, well, if, uh, if we save him in this, if we go and, um, oh, if we, because I love my time travel fix, so this is where I'm going. Well, if, when we travel back in time, if we, you know, stop his mom from, uh, ha stop this from happening to his mom, or we rescue her from the, the red light district, and, and, you know, and we bring him up, and we treat him as a brother and a friend, then he won't do all this horrible shit. He destroyed your fucking lives. He murdered your family twice. And it's just like, why would you even entertain the thought? I've never read a Fix It Fit. Uh, see, I like the Fix It Fix as long as they still punish the bad guys. I like the Fix It Fix where one of my favorite tags is... <laughs> Not everybody dies, someone lives. And then the one, and you'll get another tag that'll go with it where it's, um, the people who die are the ones who are meant to die. Or deserve to die. The ones who die are the ones who deserve to die. And I'm like, yes! Yes, okay, that makes sense. So, but, and it's when you take characters who, they were out and out fucking insane. So they did this horrible stuff. Oh, well, if we go back in time and we stop this one single event from happening, then they won't become insane. Yes, they fucking will. You have now changed yourself to a sociopath and you've got this like having a killer on, the, on a leash just because they're less likely to kill you. Like, it doesn't work that way. And it really bothers me when it's like, um, oh God, why can't I remember him? Shu... Xu Yang, Xu Xing, Xu Ying, Xu Ying, the one who uh, got his pinky lopped off and was the crazy person. Xu Yang, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Xu Yang. <laughs> uh, See now, that's the thing is I appreciate Xu Yang's care, um, craziness, but at the same time, he was insane. He was like. Because he lost a single, because he lost a pinky, and yes, traumatic, but because he lost a single finger, not only did the guy who, <laughs> I know, not only did the guy who do it have to die, but his entire clan, his entire family, anyone associated with it also had to die. I hate Chu Yang so much. And that's, it's absolutely fair. He is, he is a great character because he's the ultimate bad guy. There is no redemption there, right? So you're free to hate him because he only did pure evil. And there was zero, um, uh, there was zero reason for it. He was just fucking nuts. It's like Suwon. Hate him because he had other ways and he chose death. <laughs> like, he chose death. The evil way out to get what he wanted. But no, Zhu Yang is, um, Zhu Yang. Uh, I thought the acting was really good in The Untamed. I thought it was really good. His craziness and his love for, um, is it Sheng, Sheng, Chen Cheng? Sheng, Chen Cheng? Is that, I feel like that's wrong. Cheng Cheng. Mm. But you know who I mean. Um, <clears throat> his love and his admiration for the guy who was hunting him down was obvious. And I thought it was really well played out and it was very, very good. Um, but yeah, so Untamed did very, very fucking well. There was only, I think, one scene that I remembered 
from the original novel as I was like, oh, well, that would have been cute if they had, could have made that in. But it was only one that I that stuck out to me. You know how you're reading books like, oh, but you didn't add that, but you didn't do that. Oh, they were supposed to go over there and you didn't do that. And how did you manage to get them over here if you didn't have that scene? And they're missing a whole bunch. The Untamed did uh, mow those issues so well. Yes. Yes, I has. Um, I'm, I read it when it was still being translated originally. I, um, have the, the paperback copy. Sorry. I have the paperback copy and I have the, um, uh, the EPUB file copy for my e-reader. So. I just wish they didn't add that god awful ugly giant dog. Which one? The one where he's in the... Which one? That god-awful ugly giant dog. Do you mean the one where he's in the when uh, in the indoctrination? And they put him in the cage? That's the only time a giant dog, because it's a fucking wolf type looking thing that I could think of. Other than fairy, but fairy fairy was poorly done. Well, he, he wasn't as bad. I hate it when he's locked up. Yeah, so when he's in the indoctrination with the Wens and uh, one of, honestly, one of my favorite scenes that was, and it wasn't in the book, was in the, um, was in the Untamed. And I, or I can remember watching it going, I wish that had been in the book. And that never happens. Like you never see that. But it's the part where the Wens are, um, Wen Chow is trying to, you know, you will recite the Wen indoctrination and the, the and I recite out of this book word for word. And in the Untamed, when Gui Ying stands up and starts repeating the land scriptures, oh, I, I think that was the exact moment I fell in love with him. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I wish that had been in the book. Actually, if you want, let me, I've, I've got, I've got one for you. I've got one for you. I've got a fanfic recommendation for you. Because I've been reading this. It's been updating slowly. It was just so good. I think I'm watching that. I'm going, I love you so much. And the look on Lan Jan's face. when Because that mem moment meant so much to me when you know what's going on. So like even if, you've, if you haven't read it, but you've watched the full series and you go back and you see that moment. The acting. Uh, Wang Yibo's acting was so fucking good. Because remember, his father has been killed. His brother and uncle are missing. His home has been burned to the ground. He has no idea who is alive and who's not. So he doesn't even know if his brother's alive or dead. Everything's been taken from him. And he's standing there with... And all he has are the rules that he grew up with and his land forehead. Because the sword's already been taken away. like the And he has his forehead ribbon. So for Wei Ying to go and... and recite the rules the the few lessons that he actually learned from from gusu and the look on his face i'm like oh he loves you <laughs> it's like wait you, you did so good there let me i keep getting distracted i have to i have to recommend you this this fic you say you've never read a fix it this is this is one that you absolutely have to read um actually let me look at i hope it's too faster to look through my saves. Um, I can't do that. Can I? Series bookmarks. I think I bookmarked it. Um, a few lessons that he actually learned. I know. <laughs> Cryptids are not permitted in the cloud recesses. That one's a cute one. Uh, this one. It was <laughs> actually it's one of the first one that pops up. Okay, I'm going to recommend... I have to recommend you this fic. You like happy... Right? You like happy fix? I think that's what you said. Okay. This one. <laughs> I believe this is the one. I thought it was Operation Team Project Change the World, so I'm wondering if they... I got the wrong one. But I believe this is it. 
next? No, this is right. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is a fic that I have to recommend for you. It is Modo Zishi, um, but it's really fucking long. So it's 28 chapters, only 28? No. It's very, very long. This is this is not angst, as you would expect, but it is a trope that is very, very rarely, very rarely ever done well. And this one is done so freaking well. So Lan Sijui, Lan Jingyi, Jinling, who I really don't like, and we'll get into that, and Ouyang Zijian listened attentively as Wei Wuzhen explained his newest invention, a way to send memories to the past. Satisfied that he dealt with all possible paradoxes and running on minus two hours of sleep, he didn't make note of his son's frankly concerning expressions. We could change everything, they shouted simultaneously. For better or worse, only time will tell. So this is, it doesn't, it took me a while to get started on this because it doesn't, uh, I'm not a huge fan of ones that don't focus, I know. Because I like the novels we read. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's fair. Well, this is still ongoing. But it's the 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 length, the chapter lengths are very rewarding. This is a fix it. It is kind of a time travel. It is um it's one of those ones where if you've ever seen them um uh, uh so and so watches the series. One of those where they sit back and watch. So it's, there's a lot of twists and turns. I don't want to spoil it too much. Yeah, watching, watching the show. Um, but it's, it's very good and it's very well written. And I have cried a lot. Um, it's, there's some aspects of it that are purely uh, fan service. But, but they're kinds where it's like, I'm okay with that. But yeah, so disturbing imagery, homophobia, attractive Wei Wujian, Jin Guansheng is is his own warning. Fix it. Bam. Oh, this right here is my favorite. Hands down. Bamp Wei Ying. That ass motherfucker. And when he gets going, because in these, when he's those, he's either genius, well, he's always genius, but genius and bitchy and snarky and he's fabulous so yeah characters watching their series it this is a trope that's very rarely that's exactly what it is fan service to heal the heart so but this is a one that's very rarely done right or done well or ever completed this author i know for a fact is still updating um and they're very long very rewarding chapters so yeah i would and i liked this they combined the manual and the book and this and the series. They combine them. So they, they're picking like the best, they're cherry picking the best bits out of both. But yeah, no, I, I very firmly recommend. Actually, I'll put a link in the description of this. For anyone else who's watching this at any later point, if you want to read this, I recommend this one if you're looking for because they're if you're looking for a good series to kind of sink into, that's not angsty because you know what's going on, but it's the first time that all of the judgy characters, I'm looking at you, Lan Chiren, are getting their comeuppance. And it's everyone all together being held accountable for their actions. So I cannot stand stories that make light or, or forgive or just gloss over, um, uh, Madam, uh, oh, you, ye, I can never pronounce her name, Madam Yu's part. And there's like, oh, well, she wasn't as bad as everyone says she is. Yes, yes, she was. Clearly she was. She was awful. And in this, she's held accountable. And it's great. So good. But every, every single character is held accountable for their shit. Mm, read that. That is my, this is good because I always like to re recommend at least one fic per episode. So this is, I'll add the link in the description below. Okay, so we're going to get on to chapter 14. It's 9.46 now and I do want to get a good night's sleep tonight. 
I'm hoping work isn't crazy tomorrow. Oh, goodness me. Sorry. You fool, you've fallen for my trap. You've exposed yourself to your traumas. Which ones? <laughs> mm. <clears throat> hmm. Oh yeah, one last thing before we get started, because I want to start this controversy. I'm not a fan of Jin Ling. Explain to me why I should be. I just, uh, yeah. But then, and yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out there. I'm not a fan of Jang Chang either. It appears you wish people got what they deserved. All of this is anger. <laughs> I've seen that one in the ashes. Scene. You've decoded me, ghost. You've decoded me. <laughs> I do. I like seeing people being held accountable for stuff. And for Jang Chang, him leading the... So... It's not even said that he does. It's hinted. It's hinted that maybe he led the... Um, the Wen soldiers away from Wei Wu Zhen when he was in town buying bread for the three of them. That's never proven, and it's even glossed over in the books. So, okay, so here's a okay. <laughs> Should I be worried? I'm slightly worried. <clears throat> I don't like Jay Chang. I don't hate him, but he does anger me a lot. Fucking right. And that's, that's my thing. I don't hate Jang Chang, but when I get a fic where he's, you know, maybe not cast in the best light, I'm okay with it. I agree. Because um, I just, I feel like to say he doesn't show his, his emotions well or correctly is just a cop out to him being an abusive asshole. You know what I mean? And it's it's the same as, oh, well, well, he's just like his mother. Well, his mother was an abusive bitch. And, and he saw that perpetrated on his brother and how she treated both him and his sister and how she treated his father and all, how she treated all the people around him. Why would you ever want to emulate that? And I think it comes from a bigger person to be able to say, I'm not going to emulate that. I'm going to do better than that. And saying, oh, well, he's just like his mother and that's, he doesn't know any better. Fuck you, quite frankly. Now, this is coming from years of therapy. <laughs> that is a choice. And he makes the wrong choice. I was so hurt for Wei Ying in that opening scene where... Um, where, oh, uh, just after, I really like him though, because I feel bad for him. He was bullied and only had Jang Chang, his family. Like, poor boy, if I was stuck with Jang Chang, I'd be a jerk too. You know what? That's fucking legitimate. That is absolutely legitimate. <laughs> you know, I don't, it's not that I dislike Jing Ling necessarily. I just, he's that annoying character that... Um, everyone's saying, oh, be quiet, be quiet. You know, the bad guy's coming. And his cell phone goes off. He's that asshole. <laughs> like he's the one where it's like, oh, it, you're, you're 14, 15 years old. Don't go off into the woods and explore a haunted fucking castle. That's called the man-eating castle. Oh, I'm going to take my dog and go um, investigate this because I'm, you know, my father's... Because I can. Because I've got this dog and it's my partner and it'll go with me. Uh, let's see. Jin Ling is still a kid. He's at least more open to Wei Wuxian. So I implore him for being better than his uncle. True. Do I wish we got more of him being nice in development? Yes. Yes. But I'll take it. Yeah. 
yeah, so <clears throat> I just felt like okay. No one can fight me on this though. Len Sidui, best boy. Best boy. Len Sidui. And Len Jingyi, I love him. I feel like and and they they hypothesize this. I love the fix where Len Jingyi gets um almost adopted by um Wei Wu Zhen and now mind I do like the ones where it's Lan Sijui and Lan Jingyi as a couple. I think that's very cute. But I like them as brothers more because Lan Jingyi is just his luck to be the idiot whose phone goes off. Because Lan Jingyi, I feel like, is the Lan, is the Lan equivalent of Wei Ying. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, it's in one of the stories that I'm reading right now is <laughs> Lan Jingyi is one of the most unlan like lands. Is that how you spell it? He is the best boyfriend. Yeah, that's how you, I think that's how you spell it. Sijui? Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, Lan Jingyi is one of the most unland like lands to ever land in Gusu. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. With, yeah, with Jin Ling, I just feel like he could have made better choices, but he's always so self-centered and and wrapped up in himself that he ignores what's going on and then everyone has to come and save him to the detriment of them like you cannot tell me that Wei Wu Zhen would not would have gotten caught if it hadn't have been for Jin Ling <laughs> I love Lan Jingyi I love him so much I love you know what I loved about Lan Jingyi how I, I remember the exact moment that I loved him was when Wei Ying comes out and he starts playing the flute to stop the iron um, goddess, or not the iron goddess, the the fairy goddess, and Lan Jingyi, within the same breath, is going, you know, stop playing that, what are you doing, you lunatic, and, because <laughs> he's playing so badly, and then he goes, well, it seems to be working, let's go! <laughs> like, I love you so much. <laughs> But yeah, or, or yeah, that part is, why did you push me into those corpses? Are you trying to kill me, you lunatic? And then Lance Dre figures it out. No, no, it's the the um, the um thing sewn into our robes. It stopped them. Oh yeah, let's use that again. <laughs> he is so cute. I love him. But yes, I do love the land boys. <clears throat> Alrighty, shall we get on to chapter 14? Let's do this. <clears throat> Chapter 14 Great Beauty Will Not Reason With Mortals After Lin Qingyu got half of the power in the household, people came to him in a steady stream every day. The story of Xiao Zhen poisoning people spread throughout the mansion, Everyone got to understand that what a femme fatale was, and they looked at Xiao Zhen with awe. From matters as big as dispensing the mansion's monthly allowance, to matters as small as what kind of flowers to be planted in the yard. No one dared to make an arbitrary decision at all. <clears throat> Fuck, was that discussion for an hour? Lin Qingyu was pestered beyond endurance. He has never been interested in the general affairs of the mansion. Small things like what flowers to grow and what snacks to prepare in each room, he left to Pen Shi, who decide to decide upon. As for the other important matters, it would be best if he could maintain a hold over those. Lin Qingyu found a certain someone lying on a rocking chair with his eyes closed listening to the rain. He instructed, Find me a few more trustworthy stewards to help manage the household. <laughs> don't get a timer. <laughs> I don't want to know. <clears throat> Liu Wenchang opened his eyes and teased, 
Oh? I seem to remember that you used to be quite adverse to this kind of approach. You can't always rely on others for everything. Then, when you're too lazy to eat, to sleep, or to marry a wife and make children, will you also have someone deal with it for you? That was quite funny. Lin Ching Yu paused and said calmly, That was one situation. This is quite another. Liu Wen Cheng smiled and said, This matter is easy to handle. I'll just write another letter to my grandfather. Lin Ching Yu nodded. All right, go write it. Then help me grind the ink. Liu Wen Cheng had just said it jokingly and offhand, thinking that he would be ruthlessly rejected by Lin Ching Yu once again. Unexpectedly, Lin Ching Yu merely hesitated for a moment, then said, All right. Liu Wen Cheng was immediately overwhelmed by having been bestowed with this favor. In the study room, Liu Wen Cheng stood in front of the window railing, holding a pen in his hand. Lin Ching Yu stood quietly on one side, personally grinding the ink for him. The ink gave off a dense fragrance, but Liu Wen Cheng could still make out the light medicinal fragrance on Lin Ching Yu's body. He couldn't help wondering when his sense of smell became so good. It was spring, and the rain was plentiful. Though it had been raining for several days already, it still showed no signs of stopping. Outside the window, the spring rain drizzled, natural and fascinating, like entwined ties of love. Like entwined twines of... Entwined ties of love. <clears throat> I absolutely agree. We need some artwork on this. Liu Wen Chang wrote very slowly. It seemed that he didn't write often, but his brushwork was excellent. Letters were private things, and Lin Qingyu didn't read it deliberately. But he did catch sight of it inadvertently. They say that who a person is is reflected in their calligraphy. Liu Wen Chang's words were energetic like moving clouds and flowing water, free, easy, and smooth. It was hard to imagine that they came from the hands of someone chronically ill. After a few words, Lu Chang was struck by a bout of dizziness. Ah, oh, my hands are sore. I'm so tired. Then Ching Yu said, You can sit down and write. That won't work. If you write while sitting down, it won't come out smooth and elegant at all. Then Ching Yu. Crickets barking. Did the crickets bark? The music board broken. Fun Tong came in to deliver snacks and was met with the sight of young Master Hu writing while his own family's young master acted as red sleeves adding fragrance. Everybody else didn't? I... I think they explain that in just a moment. I think. Because I don't think they usually do, but he's choosing to. Huan Tong came in to deliver snacks and was met with the sight of young Master Hu writing while his own family's young master acted as red sleeves adding fragrance. It gave him quite the shock and it took some time to remember what he was doing there. Young Master, the kitchens have delivered plum cakes. Then Ching Yu said, You can just set it down there. Huan Tong put the plum cakes on the table. When he saw Lu Chang's writing, he said in surprise, Young Master Hu is so lazy, but his handwriting is actually so beautiful. Lu Chang said modestly, You flatter me, flatter me. It's nothing exceptional. Then Ching Yu said slowly, Looking at your calligraphy, it looks like you have diligently practiced it. Yeah, I have ha practiced a few years. 
Yeah, I have practiced for... I have practiced a few words for several years. Practicing one's calligraphy is not something done in a day. Then Ching Yu couldn't help but question. If you are... You're already complaining of a sore hand after just a few words. How could you have possibly practiced writing for leisure? Oh, obviously I was forced. I was too active as a child. Mama heard, heard that practicing calligraphy could bring calm, so she paid handsomely for calligraphy tutor, tutors to teach me how to write and read ancient Chinese. It's like she knew. Liu Wencheng lowered his eyes, his expression a mixture of reminiscence and pain. Mama was eager for the best in everything. It wasn't enough for her that she be first. She demanded that I, too, be a master of the four arts. I had to get first place in everything. It was so pitiful all the time. If it wasn't one class, it was another. I couldn't even get enough sleep. Huan Tong said sympathetically, Young Master Hu must have been so miserable. You're already so sick, but you were tossed about like that? Even us servants have it better. Then Ching Yu said indifferent, He is talking nonsense. Huan Tong's eyes widened. Huh? When did you ever hear him call Liang Shi Mama? Huan Tong scratched his head. Oh, that's right. Luan Chang didn't refute. He smiled and said, Ah, uh, I've been found out. Halfway through the letter, there was a sentence for which Luan Chang was unsure of the grammar, and so he stopped writing and pondered. He pondered and pondered until his thoughts started to stray, his eyes gradually slackening, and even the way he held the brush changed. But despite the careless way he held the brush, in a burst of power he wrapped his fingers around the brush and finished it from beginning to end, all in one go. <clears throat> I wish I could read your comments because they're right. <laughs> in an instant, brush and ink flew wildly. The master servant pair who was standing beside him received some damage. Lin Qing Yu got off relatively easy suffering only a few ink stains. It was Huan Tong who suffered more with who suffered more with a string of eek, ink marking half of his face. Moreover, because he'd been caught in surprise, he had had his mouth open and unfortunately got to have a taste of some ink. Once he came back to his senses, he immediately bleh, bleh, bleh. Liu Wancheng realized his mistake and quickly put down the brush, apologizing to them both. I'm sorry, for a moment there I forgot that this is a brush ink dipped in ink. Lin Ching Yu said, devoid of expression. Damn you. If I had hands, I'd... It... <laughs> Can you act like a normal person? Liu Wen Chang felt a little like laughing but doing so at this time would really be too unkind. He held back a smile and said, It really wasn't intentional. Here, let me wipe it for you, he said, raising his hand. Those few ink stains happened to fall under Lin Ching Yu's eyes, mi mixing with his tear-shaped mole. Just as Lu Chang reached out, Lin Ching Yu blinked. Long eyelashes, like butterfly wings, brushed lightly over Lu Chang's fingertips. Slightly ticklish and soft. Lu Chang's hand paused. He actually froze, and even his breathing stagnated. Lin Ching Yu didn't notice his strange actions. He brushed his hand away and said in a cool tone, Are hands that you use to wipe away ink stains? Are hands what you use to wipe away in ink stains? Oh, yes. Liu Chang recovered his senses. He turned and ordered, Huan Tong, 
Get a handkerchief and wipe it for young master. Huan Tong argued, I haven't got all the ink out of my mouth yet. Hua Lu brought over some warm water, and Lin Qing Yu used a wet handkerchief to wipe his face. At this time, Pen Shi's personal maid, Huan Tong, Huan Chao, came to Lin Qing Yu and said, Xiao Zhen, our young our Yen Ang requests that you go to the front hall. Then Ching Yu said, I see. Pen Shi was a woman and he was a man. Distinction was made between them. Although they shared the running of the household, they rarely met each other and would simply let the servants deliver messages. Pen Shi's sudden invitation meant that there was something that needed to be discussed in person. Then Ching Yu said to Luan Chang, I'm going out for a bit. You should finish writing that letter and send someone to Gu Guaogong Mansion as soon as possible. Luan Chang absentmindedly agreed. Going back to the window, he looked as Lin Ching Yu opened an umbrella under the curtain of rain. He looked down at his fingertips, chuckled to himself, and said, What the hell? Pen Shi had also been a lady of an official's family. It was a pity that her family had suffered a reversal of fortune. In order to make a living, she has to submit to being a concubine. Her family had little power, and she had borne no sons. That she was able to receive favor from Nan and Hu was not only because of her appearance, but more so because of her quiet temperament. She didn't fight or contend and she never talked indiscreetly in front of Nen and Hu. The things in court were already disturbing enough. When Nen and Hu returned to the mansion, he just wanted a bit of peace, and Pan Shi's was undoubtedly the best place to go. In order to avoid suspicion, Lin Qing Yu and Pan Shi brought a lot of servants with them whenever they met, and this time was no different. Lin Ching Yu had never liked the people of the Nananhu mansion, but because of the wedding gift Pan Shi had given him and Luan Chang, and also because of the medicinal plaster she had given when he got a sprain, he did not loathe this person. He was simply indifferent. Lin Ching Yu patiently exchanged a few polite words with her and said, if Yunang has anything important, you can just say it directly. Pen Shi nodded and said, It will be Qingming in a few days. The, Lin, the Lu family's hometown is in Linan, and the presentation of offerings is all handled by the Lu clan's branch family. It's to show filial piety Master Hu keeps two ever-burning altar lamps for his parents in Changsheng Temple, in the outskirts of the capital. In the past, during this time, Master Hu's wife would go to Changsheng Temple to pray for the ancestor's blessing and protection. However, Madame is still yet to recuperate from her illness, and Master Hu... Pan stopped and said nothing more. Since Cheng Guifei's birthday, Liang Shi has rarely appeared in front of others. They say she's in recuperation, but she was actually being confined. Nan and Hu has always been in a high position. He was proud and arrogant and couldn't bear the shame of being the target of deception by her schemes. Liang Shi's fault could not be called small, but neither could it be called big. However, since she violated Nan and Hu's taboo, she was naturally made to suffer a lot of hardships. Lin Qing Yu said, This being the case, I will have to trouble Yinang to pray for our blessings. Pan shook her head and said, I am just a concubine. I cannot take the madam's place to light the incense. You are the Hu Mansion's officially wedded Saojin. Except for the madam, 
Only you can go. Then she knew declined to comment. If they had him go and light incense for the ancestors of the, of the Lu family, he might just directly extinguish the ever-burning lamps that Nan and Hu has kept burning for more than ten years. However, it would be nice if he could take this opportunity to visit the Chengxing Temple and pray for his family. Then Ching Yu said, All right, I will arrange it. And she said, the road has been made slippery by the rain. Young Master can wait for the rain to stop before heading out. Then Ching Yu nodded and took his leave. Pen Shi watched him leave and then suddenly said, Xiao Jin, please wait. Then Ching Yu asked, Is there anything else? Pen walked forward and bowed to Lin Ching Yu, saying, Ten years ago, I had yet to enter the mansion and I lived with my mother. We made a living by washing and weaving. That winter had been bitterly cold, and my mother had caught a bad cold. It wouldn't heal even after many days, and she was dying. However, with but four bare walls for a house, we couldn't afford to pay for medicinal treatment or medicine. I took a few copper coins and begged for medicine at the ever bright and harmonious drugstore but was harassed by a patch passing lecher. At that time, Lin Pan Yan was there selecting medicinal herbs. Fortunately, he came to my rescue. Lin Pan Yan not only followed me to my mother's to see my mother at home, but also paid for the medicine for us. He is our lifesaver. And she was also choked with sobs by the time she finished. Lin Jin Yu smiled faintly and said, This was indeed something my father would have done. Pan Shi turned to the side and wiped her eyes. She said in embarrassment, I've let Xiao Jin see something embarrassing. I just want to say, if Xiao Jin has any need of me in the future... I will do my best to help Xiao Zhen in return for his life-saving grace. Lin Ching Yu's slightly cold voice warmed up a bit. Yanang is too, too polite. Back at the Blue Wind Pavilion, Lin Ching Yu ordered people to prepare for the Qingming trip. But the rain still showed no signs of stopping. With the weather not having cleared up for a long time, the house became damp. Stepping outside, you were met with rain everywhere. The people's moods were also inexplicably low. Liu Chang was dressed for a few days. Oh, Liu Chang was depressed for a few days. When Lin Qing Yu asked him what was wrong, he didn't say anything and just kept sighing. Having asked once and not getting an answer, Lin Ching Yu didn't bother asking, ag asking again, and simply let him do what he wanted. <sighs> I know this. On this day, Liu Wen Chang was once again dazed in bed. Hua Lu brought his medicine. When she called him to take it, he didn't respond, looking as though he had nothing left to live for. Hua Lu turned to Lin Qing Yu for help. Xiao Zhen, this is... this... Lin Qing Yu said, I'll do it. You can go. Just wait. After Hua Lu left, Lin Qing Yu walked to the bed. Towering over Lu Chang, he asked, What's the matter with you? Lin Qing Yu Luan Cheng. Lin Qing Yu showed his displeasure and threatened, If you don't say anything, I'm going to have Hua Tong take away your quilt every day at the break of dawn. Luan Cheng choked. Oh my goodness, we're being raided! <laughs> hello! Holy goodness. Hi, hello, welcome! 
It's a books raid. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what to say. I'm so green to this. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for joining me. Um, <clears throat> sorry, you caught us almost just near the end. Uh, we are currently reading, uh, found you via reading fun. Come to visit. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Um, we are currently reading Married Thrice to a Salted Fish. <laughs> thank you so much for the follow and for rating. And holy crap, this my mind's just kind of blown. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, we are currently reading Married Thrice to Salted Fish. We are coming up to, I think, probably the end of chapter 14. And it's a Don May and it's lovely. And we're you're actually... Hang on, because this is a really funny part, and I don't want to... Um, it'll give you a good idea as to what we're reading. So I'm just going to continue. Thank you so much for being here. Holy crap. This is very cool. Um, oh, crap. Where was I? I'll, I'll take your, your quick... Thank you so much for following... Uh, Ero Mikim? Mikim? Holy crap! This is so exciting! It's so exciting. Hello, everyone! Oh, uh, crap, where was I? <laughs> Lin Ching Yu showed his displeasure and threatened, If you won't say anything, I'm going to have Hua Tong take away your quilt every day at the break of dawn. Li Wan Chang choked. I'm already like this. Can't you be a little sympathetic? Like what? Li Wan Chang hid his face with his hands and said in agony, I'm fucking... It seems like I'm no good anymore. Then she knew. What do you mean by no good? It seemed that Luan Chang found it hard to speak about. That there is no good. In the past, every morning, as long as I wake up, you know? Then she knew. Let's go. Luan Cheng looked down at his waist, incomparably distressed. These past few days, it just won't get up. <laughs> Thank you so much, readers. You readers, you came at like the best time, <laughs> like the best possible time. This is Yui, by the way. I know. <laughs> this little white uh, baby beside me is Yui. I see where this is going. I know you can tell. Oh dear. <laughs> No, it seems like I'm no good anymore. It just won't get up. Where is it? <laughs> These past few days, it just won't get up. Then Ching Yu said, Oh, that's normal. Lu Wen Cheng suddenly raised his head. Normal? In order to improve the prescription... Oh, there's no quotes. In order to improve the prescription, I had a lot of... Oh, God. Priya Labada. Pseudo ginseng type herb for your, to your medicine. Then Ching Yu downplayed it. He sounded like he was talking about what they were having for dinner tonight. Long term use of such drugs will cause some um, effects on men. You don't use it anyway. You shouldn't care about that. Can't use it. Don't care. Lu Wan Chang almost spit out a mouthful of old blood. And for a while, he didn't know how to how to refute these outrageous remarks. If he got angry with Lin Ching Yu, he might provoke him into anger, and he'll still have to coax him later. Be reasonable. As we all know, big beauties will not reason with mere mortals. Liu Wan Chang held back for a while, before he said, I have no use for it. But whether I use it or not is not the same as whether I can use it or not. Lin Ching Yu disagreed. It's a matter of life and death. Can't you put away your useless ego? Living well for half a year is more is more important thing. Liu Wan Chang was in his death throes. But, Lin Ching Yu said impatiently. No buts. Young Master Hu. As a patient, the only thing you have to do is to obey the doctor's orders. Drink the medicine. Lu Wan Chang looked down at the dark soup and medicine and hesitated to speak. He wanted to say something, but stopped. I wanted to speak again, 
and finally Lin Ching Yu gave you Lin Ching Yu a thumbs up. And two words that Lin Ching Yu couldn't understand popped out of his mouth. So badass. <laughs> oh my god, I love the time. <laughs> he's all wilted and he's still coaxing some great beauties. Jesus. That was so cool. Um, so hello, Raiders. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, <laughs> I can't get over that. It's What do you mean? Don't care. You don't use it. Um, so we are currently reading uh, Don May. It's, uh, again, Married Thrice to Salted Fish by uh, Bika B. And it's about the main character. I know, poor kid. Uh, the two main characters, Lin Ching Yu is probably one of our main characters. Um, main main characters and then the secondary main character is Lu Wan Chang. Lu Wan Chang is uh, if you don't know the Chinese term salted fish is lazy and not going to do anything and I don't care and you can't make me and it's just breathing is too much effort I'm going to die. <laughs> one of those type people. Very relatable. And uh, Lin Xing Yu is his probably opposite. He's very driven uh, he has the goal. He wants to enter the Imperial Medical Office and take the exams, and he's very driven. Uh, however, because Luan Chang is wealthy and dying, uh, Lin Ching Yu... Oh, by the way, this is a uh, gay romance, so BL. Uh, Lin Ching Yu, who's also male, gets forced into marrying Luan Chang in a last-ditch effort to save Luan Chang from dying. Married thrice to assault the to a lazy person, yes. <laughs> but it's like lazy to the extreme. Um, I can't write a letter because it's too much effort to lift my hand. Like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, when it says married thrice, this is a transmigration story. So um, this is not a spoiler because it's in the summary. Lu Chang will die. So we haven't gotten there yet, but he is terminally ill. Lin Ching Yu is his husband and his doctor, or he's come up with this brand new medicine to help him live at least, what did it say, half a year longer? Um, then, uh, but it has also apparently made him impotent, and he's upset by this. Also lurking to feed cats, but I'm still here. Lurk. I love lurkers. That's awesome. I'm so flipping excited by this, this raid. I, that's so cool. Thank you everyone so much. Um, but yeah, so I stream... Have a good look. I stream every Wednesday and Sunday night, possibly more, but not until winter time because I'm a cottager. So Wednesdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I may actually move it up on Wednesdays, but it depends on if I need to walk Yui. By the way, this right here, this little white angel, this is my Yui. Uh, he is, if he's on the screen, it means he's in the room with us. And actually, I've got... Excited, Yui, because it's very, this is all very exciting. He's actually asleep right now because we just came back from the cottage. And so he's... But yeah, so we read on here. We talk about Don May and manga and anime. And I make Ghost cry. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, but yeah, so it's very, very exciting. Um, I don't even know what to do. I'm just... I'm fucking buzzing. Uh, this, uh, we do swear on here as well, so I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, 1025. Uh, oh, there's kitties. Look at the kitties. This is Toothless, one of the six cats I'm feeding. Is he actually Toothless? He looks like Toothless the dragon. He looks like Toothless the dragon. Anyone else? That's perfect. Yes, Ghost agrees with me. Um, <laughs> I don't know that you, they agree with you. I'm just saying they will. Um, but yeah, so we don't usually stay on much, much longer than this because we have to, she is almost toothless, one tooth, aww, is it a front tooth that at least sticks out and looks super cute? My Yui is absolutely passed out. He, we went to the cottage for the first time this weekend, or not, the first full weekend of the, that he would remember. And he swam so much. Almost got sprayed by a skunk, but didn't. Thank God. Um, but yeah, so he's just exhausted. 
But yeah, so um, anything more about... Yes, so we talked about all the stuffs. Haha, <laughs> no, it's firmly in our mouth. Pen flip. I wish I had emojis on here. I just, I'm, I'm brand new. Like, brand spanking new. Um, so I don't have any of the fun stuff yet. Except for, Ghosty, give us some love. <laughs> this is my one trick that I've got. That's my love. Um, there. Oh, good, it did work. But, uh, yeah. So I will be... We will be continuing on on Wednesday. Wednesdays are usually a much longer stream because um, I don't work on Thursdays. And if if we don't get to chatting too much, looking at you, um, you know who you are. Uh, we can usually get through quite a few chapters. Um, it looks so good. I love it so much. Well, actually, hey, I'll put it up to a vote because this, I don't think this chapter is too terribly long. Should I continue with chapter 15? Up to you guys. You let me know. I don't think I have any, like, reading sounds on my board. Piece of, I still have a torn piece of paper. We did. We did chat a lot less today. It was much more manageable doing it between chapters than during chapters. You want chapter you want chapter 15 just for the purely for the title. <laughs> okay, as long as yeah, we've still got a few people and I'd like to keep them, so let's let's go with chapter 15 and I'll just be I want more. They're funny. They are funny. Okay. <clears throat> Just, I I am a little... Looks like streamlining again. Not Willis Seedress. I'm reading Sherlock Holmes right now. Oh, that's very cool. Which Sherlock Holmes are you reading? I don't know why my mouth did that. I don't know what's happening. No, um... <clears throat> I'm going to continue on with chapter 5, but I am watching the chat. Ghost, don't do that to me. <laughs> don't tempt me. Um, <clears throat> just, I do apologize for any um, stuttering. We are presently on the sign of four. Ooh. That sounds fun, but you don't have a mostly stream on weekends. That's fun. I will definitely have to check that out. Okay. Chapter 15. He is all wilted and he is still coaxing some great beauties. Recently, the atmosphere in the Blue Wind Pavilion was different from usual. The Hua Mei no longer sang, and the Mina no longer called out, Dr. Lin! And young Master Hu withered. His wilting was not only physical, but also emotional. There was no more bird walking, no flower viewing, no arrow throwing. His eyes were closed, his body paralyzed. He was cut off from all worldly desires. <clears throat> all the remaining servants of the Blue Wind Pavilion liked their master very much. Young Master Hu was charming and generous. He often found, found fun things which he enjoyed with the servants. With his wilting, the courtyard became gloomier and gloomier, and not the slightest cheer could be heard. Hua Lu and Hua Tong were the closest to the masters, and they felt the changes most acutely. They all agreed that Young Master Hu and Xiao Zhen seemed to be quarreling, and now they were both ignoring each other. I like, is he wilting or is he throwing a tantrum? I can't tell. Huan Tong was certain. Young Master Hu must have provoked our family's young master. Based on his observation, young Master Hu was unable to control his tongue in front of his young um, in front of his family's young master, 
causing his young master to frown. He would then pull at his sleeve with a smile and apologize. Wan Tong couldn't understand what was with that. Kua Lu sighed. They say husband and wife quarrel at the head... God. They say husband and wife quarrel at the head of the bed and make peace at the foot of it. I hope they reconcile soon. You get what she's saying, right? Huan <laughs> Tong bared the truth with one remark. Though they've never slept on the same bed. Lin Qing Yu knew that Luan Cheng was depressed, but he really didn't understand why. That he hadn't given advance notice to Luan Cheng about the side effects of the medicine was his slip. But if he didn't use this medicine and instead used the one originally written for on his father's prescription, Luan Cheng would have to suffer unbearable pain after taking the medicine. Compared to that, what was a little erectile dysfunction? The most important point was, even if Luan Chang could get it up, he was in no position to make use of it. He himself said that he was too lazy to move. Still one of my favorite lines, yes. If only Luan Chang could re quickly realize it and cheer up. After reigning for almost half a month, a musty smell appeared in the study, affecting people's moods to read. In Lin Qing Yu prepared some incense which had the effect of removing dampness. He asked the servants to light them in each room. He then offered several servants to take out the moldy books from the bookcase and spread them out in front of the fire to dry. The study was bustling with activity. Lin Qing Yu was in no mood to read and simply joined the servants in cleaning. He casually opened a copy of Lin An Travel Notes and saw comments written in ink in the margins. He asked, Is this the young master Hu's book? Kua Lu looked over and said, Yes, young master Hu read this book all the time last year. He even told me he wanted to go to Lin An to see the scenery south of the Yangtze River. Lin Qing Yu frowned. Was he also the one who wrote these notes? Most certainly. Lin Qing Yu took a closer look at the line of characters. The more he looked at it, the more he felt that something was wrong. The characters in Lin Lu Wan Chang's earlier letter to Wen Gong Gong were similar in shape and appearance to his calligraphy last year but it didn't look at all alike in spirit. It looked like... it like he was desperately imitating it. Of course the shape of the characters could be imitated, but a character's grace and charm reflected a person's mood and character. No matter how similar the shape, there would always be a difference in spirit. Lin Qing Yu pondered for a long time and asked, Is young master Hu up yet? Hua Lu said, He got up half an hour ago. Master Gugong has ordered for a few maids and stewards to be sent over here. The eldest young master is talking with them in the main room. Lin Qing Yu walked into the door and was about to enter when he heard Luan Cheng's voice. You are the people sent by my maternal grandparents. I can trust you. I think there is no need for me to say it. You should know what to do. An unfamiliar voice said, Young Master need not worry. We will do our very best to share Young Master whose worries and tribulations. Wrong. It's not my worries you'll be sharing. It's the Xiao Zhen's, Lu Wen Chang said lightly. I won't be able to last until next winter anyway. When I go, Xiaojin will go back to the Lin residence. It is my wish that when he leaves, he be able to bring most of the Hu Mansion's family's property with him without the Hu Master and Madam making things difficult for him. Do you understand what I mean? 
After a short silence, several people said in unison, Young Master Hu and Young Master and Xiaojin have our sole guide. Young Master Hu and Xiaojin serve as our sole guide. Luan Chang was quick, quite satisfied. After the matter is done, you will be handsomely rewarded. Lin Ching Yu felt his heart constrict somewhat. He couldn't help closing his eyes and sighing. Luan Chang sent the people off. He picked up the tea from off the table and had just taken a sip when he heard, Greetings, Xiao Jin, coming from outside. His hand paused. Pretending not to hear, he went on drinking his tea. Lin Ching Yu walked in and said, Young Master Hu? Luan Chang gave a reserved, Hmm. After Lin Ching Yu called out to him, he said nothing more, as though considering his words. Luan Chang had no intention of compromising so quickly about the matter concerning his dignity as a man. It was embarrassing enough that he wasn't able to carry this great beauty. And now, the great beauty had directly taken away his dignity as a man. How could he possibly tolerate this? He didn't blame Lin Ching Yu. How could he not know that Lin Ching Yu did this to save him? Or couldn't he have warned him about it in advance? It's scary, all right. He admitted that he was lazy, but he was still a man. How could he be indifferent to this kind of thing? <laughs> anyway, he is wilted. And what kind of beauty is still coaxing? The great beauty should be handed over to the man, male protagonist who can coax him seven times a night. He should lie down and die. Liu Wen Chang put down the teacup and said, If you're here to apologize, you don't have to. Lin Ching Yu said, You think too much. I'm not here to apologize. Liu Wen Chang, Yes, it's very strong. Lin Ching Yu muttered to himself irresolutely. How about we make a bond as sworn brothers? Liu Wen Cheng was startled, then laughed angrily. You already castrated me and now I'm going to be sworn brothers with you? You must think I'm cheap. Lin Ching Yu patiently said, I didn't castrate you. Your inability is only caused by drugs. A few acupuncture needles and you'll be fine. Luan Chang was comforted, but still sneered. No need to change it. I think this prescription is very good. After all, I don't need it. I don't need to care. Don't make trouble. Then Ching Yu leaned in close, his voice soft. Didn't you always want us to call each other brothers? The word brother made Lu Wan Cheng raise his eyes and, and look at the beauty standing in front of him. Like a plum blossom unrelentingly defying the snow. If he could get Lin Ching Yu to call him Gu Gu, then selling himself cheap didn't sound, didn't seem so out of the question. Sorry, sorry. Liu Wen Cheng raised his eyebrows. Are you serious? Then Ching Yu nodded. You have my word as a gentleman. Liu Wen Cheng covered his lips and coughed. He said, Then let's make another bond. Neither of them had ever experienced becoming sworn brothers. So Lu Wen Chang just did it according to how it was portrayed in the books he read. He asked Huan Tong to prepare an incense burner, a dagger, apricot wine, and praying mats. He also ordered for a small table to be placed under the eaves. The rest of the things were then systematically laid out. Hua Lu had never seen such a situation before. She asked curiously, what are young master and Xiao Jin up to? Hua Tong, Quan Tong was delighted. 
Can't you see? They're going to be sworn brothers. Hua Lu's eyes widened and she suddenly set an, set an alarm. Become what? Become sworn brother. <laughs> Become sworn brothers. With a sip of this wine, we brothers go together. That kind. Hua Lu's big eyes were filled with even greater confusion. But they're already married. Lu Wenchang picked up the dagger and said hesitantly, The book says that when swearing brotherhood, it should be done by taking an oath with your lips smeared with blood. Then Ching Yu took on the mentality of someone accompanying their younger brother to play house. He said, One's body, hair, and skin are all re received from one's parents. So long as it's done with sincerity. Smearing or not smearing one's lips with blood isn't important. You're right. Lu and Chang lit three incense candles and inserted them into the incense burner. Let's just swear the oath. The two clasped hands. Oh. The two clasped the cup of wine in their hands and they both knelt down on the praying mats. Luan Chang said ceremoniously, With the gods of heaven and earth as our witness, today we, Luan Chang and Lin Qing Yu, although of different surnames, come together as brothers. We seek not to be born on the same day, in the same month, and in the same year, but Luan Chang paused. He changed his words with a smile. For the long future ahead, we will share the same boat. Even stones will be steamed buns to eat. We will work as one without heed for riches. Even plain boiled water will be taken with gladness. Lynching you. The two of them together drank the wine for the ritual, and Lynching you called Huan Tong to help Luan Chang get up. Seeing Lu Anchang smiling, smiling, Lin Qing Yu said coldly, Are you happy now? The corners of Lu Anchang's lips ticked up into a smirk. I just got myself a good brother. Of course I'm happy. What about you, Jing Didi? After saying so, he looked expectantly at Lin Qing Yu. Lin Qing Yu said lightly, I'm fine, Wen Cheng Zhong. Wan Cheng Shong. Liu Wan Cheng's smile froze on his face. No, 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 no. I called you Ching Yu Didi. So you should call me Wan Cheng Guga. That's only fair. To call each other brothers. If not Xiong, then what? Liu Wan Cheng suddenly felt like he'd been hit by a bolt from the blue. Lynching you, you have no heart. Lynching you laughed and said, You've been making a fuss for so long. Just stop already. Let's go back. You have to drink your medicine. After you drink it, I'll perform acupuncture for you and bring back your dignity as a man. It was in the middle of... And then take six. It was in the middle third of April. The rain finally stopped. The horizon cleared up. There was no cloud in the sky. A warm breeze blew into their sleeves. It was a good day to travel. Lin Ting Yu no longer delayed. He prepared to set out for Cheng Sheng Temple. Before leaving, he went to see Luan Cheng. Luan Cheng had actually already woken up, but he still remained lying on the bed, thinking of who knows what. He seemed to be in a good mood and gave him a lazy greeting. Lin Ting Yu immediately understood, and he said with a smile that was yet not a smile. As they say, joy puts heart into a man. It seems that the acupuncture treatment worked. Luan Chang. Mm. Perfect timing. Let me have a look. Luan Chang was stricken with panic and he wrapped the quilt tightly around him. Have a look at what? You're asking what? 
Lin Ching Yu said lightly. There's nothing two people who've been studying medicine hasn't seen. You don't have to be shy. Li Huan Chang said quietly. Ching Yu, I find that you're getting worse and worse. Lin Ching Yu's lips curled up. Didn't young Master Hu say that he liked it best when I do bad things? Li Wen Chang's eyes darkened and he chuckled softly. Indeed, if Dr. Lin wants to see it, of course, I have to acquiesce. But I don't feel like moving, so I'll have to trouble you to take it. <laughs> so I'll have to trouble you to take a look at it yourself. Lin Ching Yu then joked. Then just forget it. There's nothing to see anyway. Lu Wancheng still wanted to retort, but was interrupted by Huan Tong. Young master, the carriage is ready. Lin Ching Yu looked out the window. Spring was in full bloom. The sunshine was just right. He asked, Young master Ho, would you like to go out to relieve your boredom? Go where? Shangxing Temple. Lu Wencheng thought for a while. He then smiled and said, All right. It just so happened that there was someone he wanted to see. And so Lin Ching Yu, together with Lu Wencheng and Hua Tong, rode the carriage to Chengsheng Temple in the suburbs of the, of the capital. Chengsheng Temple was the foremost temple in the empire. Its interior was tranquil and solemn thoughtful and contemplative. There was an endless stream of pilgrims. Ordinary people could only burn incense and worship in the front hall. The rear courtyard was reserved for receiving high-ranking officials or members of influential families. It was exactly here that the one uh, that one of Lin Qing Yu's sworn enemies, the Dayu's national teacher, who wrote his eight characters for the Nan and Hu's mansion, resided and cultivated. Lin Ching Yu has always wanted to ask how the natural, national teacher calculated his eight characters to be beneficial to Lu Wencheng. Was it actually the will of heaven if it was wrote down deliberately? Did the national teacher know that it was his line of characters he had written almost ruined an innocent person's life? It was a pity that the national teacher was in constant closed-door retreat. Apart from the emperor, it wasn't easy even for the empress of the crown prince to see him, or the crown prince to see him, let alone others, let alone him who is nothing more than the male wife of a who, of a who's mansion. After the monk who greeted them found out their identity, he respectfully said, It's young Master Hu and Xiao Chen. Please come with me. Master Hu's ever burning altar lamps are in the side hall. Then Ching Yu said, It will suffice for, jung for just young Master Hu to see the ever burning altar lamps. I will stay here in the front hall to burn incense and pray for blessings. Lu Wan Chang said indifferently, All right. Lu Wencheng's illness was temporarily suppressed, but when all was said and done, he was still a dilapidated person and couldn't be left without someone beside him. Lin Qing Yu asked Huan Tong to accompany him. Lin Qing Yu walked to the Buddha statue and asked the monk for three incense sticks. After lighting the incense, he knelt on the prayer mat, closed his eyes, cleared all cleared away all thoughts, and brought his family to mind. Then, when he inserted the incense into the burner, he suddenly remembered that fierce, that farce of becoming sworn brothers from a few days ago. For some reason, he wanted to laugh. Liu and Chang seemed to be taking a long time. There were many people coming in and out of the front hall. The monk then asked him to go to the rear courtyard to wait. Lin Ching Yu followed the little monk to the back wing. Compared to the front, there were a lot less people here. 
a winding path led to the quiet seclusion. It was elegant, suitable, quiet and delicate. Lin Ching Yu has always been fond of quiet. At this time, he couldn't help but wish to walk by himself to calm his mind. He asked the little monk to go on ahead and leave first. He then took an aimless stroll along narrow paths by himself. Unexpectedly, the end of the path actually led to a blooming peach grove. Amidst the fragrance and dappled shadows that was a stone table, two men sat opposite with two men sat opposite each other with the table between them. One was a handsome young man dressed in crimson, Lu Wan Chang. The other was clothed in blue, with a temperament as though he were apart, apart from the world, pure and fresh, handsome and light-hearted. Lin Ching Yu had a feeling that this person should be the Dai Yu's national teacher, Xu Jian Yan. Xu Jian Yan was admittedly a rarely seen handsome man, but not only was Luan Cheng not the least bit inferior, he even somewhat had the upper hand. Seeing his languid and carefree posture, sitting under the peach blossom tree with flowers falling behind him like rain. It was the very picture of a graceful son of nobility, as clear and bright as a jade tree before the wind. And he had obviously been like a str <laughs> and he had obviously been like a stranded salted fish in bed just a couple of hours ago. This person was simply too good at pretending. As long as there were others present, Lu Wan Chang always appeared to be the most dazzling one, like a brilliant gem reflecting all the light. It was only in front of him that he lost all decency. Lin Ching Yu couldn't help thinking, if only Lu Wan Chang usually had even a tenth of his manner now, just how much weight could be taken off his mind? Xu Jianyan lifted up his sleeve and personally helped Luan Cheng steep a cup of tea. And what brings young Master Hu here, despite being in poor health? Luan Cheng nodded lightly. He smiled, polite but disaffected. I have a matter that I wish to have the national teacher's wise opinion on. Liu Xianyan smiled and said, Young Master Hu may as well ask. Liu Cheng said slowly, In this world, can there be resurrection from the dead? Or a transferring of the soul to another body? Father's note. Some noble sons look bright and beautiful, but in fact have been poisoned by their wives. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This is direct translation from the other. Some noble sons look bright and beautiful, but in fact they have been poisoned by their wives. Is that in relation to... To how in in others they look immaculate, but to the wife they're like. <laughs> that prison sentence gave me pause too. <laughs> but I'm like, is that is that what the author means? Because remember, this is all mostly Google Translate. So how does that? So it's like. In, in public, they look perfect and respectable and all that, but once they get behind closed doors and in front of their wives, the real them comes out. <laughs> They're just lazy slobs. <laughs> just completely disintegrate. I, That's what I took from that. That's what I'm choosing. All right. Nobody look. I'm going to peek at what the next title of the next chapter is. And Ghost? No. Wait, let's see. Does they know their name? <gasps> okay. So... Uh, 
I do know what happens next. Ha 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 ha. So this story, I started reading this for those of you who are just turning in, tuning in. I started reading this myself and I've read up to, I think, chapter 20, maybe less, maybe more. Um, so I know a few spoilers, but then after that, it's all downhill for everyone. Um, so yeah, so this has been, so the chapter, you, you didn't see nothing. I ain't gonna lie, no, you didn't see nothing. Um, for those of you who are joining us, um, we also have a Discord to which Ghost pokes, posts a lot of memes that they don't want anyone else to see, but if you're on Discord, then it's okay, apparently. Looking at you. Um, also, uh, if you've missed any episodes and want to catch up, some of the later chapter or earliest chapters have, of course, left Twitch because it's been a while, but they're all on the YouTube page, which are, will also be in the links of this, of the description once I get it all um, done and dusted. So yeah, so that was this. Let me go back to, where am I going? This, mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so I want to thank you so much, books, <laughs> books, brews, and booze. Do you drink on your channel? Because I'm looking to get some drinking on my channel, but I just, it keeps me up at night, so I can only do it on Wednesdays. The irony is not lost on me. Um, that's interesting. So yeah, I will absolutely have to check out your channel afterwards. It's so cool. Because I love me some... Why did my light just blink? Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, again, we are, will be posting, I post on here, live stream, every Wednesday and Sunday night at 8 p.m. And we will be continuing with this story. And... Um, as Ghost has so lovely pointed out, there will be pain. So absolutely you'll want in on this. Okay, yep, we talk books and I usually drink in a you drink in the brew category. Tea, coffee, craft beer, cider. Ooh, I love me a cider. Loves me a cider. Actually, if you want oh oh yeah, I had two food recommendations this uh today, which I completely forgot, but you remind me of. Um, I am a huge sake drinker. I love sake, my sake, and there's two, there's a summer drink and an all year drink that I hope to recommend for people if they would care, but, um, books are my favorite thing to talk about. Ciders are my fave, big fan. <laughs> so books do you do you what kind of stuff do you read do you read mostly the the classics the fantasy one and the romance ghost don't forget the romance guys to do the romance i am all about the romance and even if it doesn't have it i'll invent it <laughs> eh. oh, i suppose i can close this now Okay, so everyone remember that we're on chapter 16 next time. I hope we don't forget. I'll try not to. But yeah, so I'm, I definitely want to check out your channel and see what kind of romance fantasy mix. So I've been sticking with books of the public domain. Yikes, Anna Green Gables, that's a long one. Are you Canadian? That's, oh, that's a long series. In the middle of Sherlock, as we know. You really are reading the classics and the long ones. Good on you. I have been to the Anna of Green Gables house. It was amazing. And it's it's still there. I think it's still there. Should be. Um, for Lucy Maud. It is very good. It's a very good series. Are you, did you read the whole series? Like all of it? Like the married and the kid and through the war and not Canadian. I'm on the east coast of the US. But I love Anne deeply. Fair. Absolutely fair. Yes, T gang. That's true. Um, yeah, 
folks, if you ever get the chance to visit uh, the Anna Green Gables house, it's amazing the way that they've done it up. And there's actually a full um, Anna Green Gables tour. So they still have the, if I'm remembering this right, which it's been a few years, admittedly. Um, but if I'm remembering this right, they actually still have the train station that he picked her up at. And then you can take the wagon ride to the house that they would have taken. It's very cool the way they do it. Thank you, slow down, Sherlock. And I figure, well, it's worth Anne throughout. I would freak out to go there. It would be so cool. It was amazing. And it's the, uh, they had... We went in, I want to say, uh, I can't remember exactly when, but I, I will forever remember the flowers that they had around the outside of the house. And then as soon as you walk in and you can smell the, uh, old houses have a unique smell and it's like the, the, the waxed wood floors. And the wallpaper, it has such a distinct smell to it. And it smelled like warm tea and sunshine. It was the weirdest thing, but it was so great. Thoroughly recommend it. Orchard House 2 in Massachusetts, the little woman house. I see, I see. You're, so you really are a connoisseur of the classics. If you ever need a guest reader to do Pride and Prejudice, I'm your girl. <laughs> I'm actually, I have a, um, a new audio book in the works and it's for, because Pride and Prejudice is, as Ghost knows, cause I went off on them, um, it's public domain. So you can write and publish essentially fan fiction and publish it under a Pride and Prejudice variation. Um, I'm doing a new audio book by, oh, let me pull it up. It's just, it's really long and it's really convoluted, but it's the background characters getting to have, excuse me, getting to have their life stories. And it's like the background characters are going to all the balls and everything. And they're kind of witnessing this through all the gossip that's going around. It was really, really well written, but some very big words, like 13 letter words. I'm like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what it means, and I don't know how to say it. Um, not all a classics, not at, not at all a classics person. Actually, I haven't read that many of them at all. That's fair. There's too many of them. But yeah, so that's fun. That's fun. How long have you been doing it? Well, I suppose I would get that information just by going on your site. Oh, that's the thing. That's the thing. Why they close the school? Yeah, it's just it's really. Like, I'm not Chinese, but I have an easier time pronouncing the Chinese words and names in these Don Mays that I read than the Mr. Such, Mrs. Such, Mrs. Such. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, wow. So you're new too. Oh, okay. Wow. So yeah, you started just a few months. I, we, I think I went live for the first time accidentally in April. So I as a new baby. Yes, it was one of those ones where I was trying to figure out my settings and just went live. Um, which we're living the audiobook dream. It's not a dream. <laughs> no, that's why. No, it is. I, I, there's nothing I would rather be doing. I just wish that I were making enough that I could pay someone to do my editing for me. But I will bitch about that until I get someone to do it. So <laughs> that's not a new one. I've always wanted to read out loud, but I'm not brave enough. Do you talk to yourself out loud? I'll follow your book, Bruce. Yeah, absolutely. As a follow too. But uh, let me post this on here because I'm not, not a lot of people know about it. And then the ones who do don't take advantage of it as they should. So there's, oh no, I don't want to go to that one. I'm just going to go to the main site here. Um, let me go back to this. I is not smooth at this at all. Just FYI. I do talk to myself a lot. So this is the audiobook website that I got my start on. Um, I don't use it so much anymore, but it's a great 
starting point. Let me just try and get this up so that you can't see. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're silly. It won't go any less. Okay. So this is called ACX and it's called the Audiobook Creation Exchange. Um, let me see if I can move this over a bit more. Oh, hold on. Ooh. There we go. Um, it's affiliated with Audible and Amazon. So anything that you create on here, it goes on to... Yay! Hello, Happy Nightmares. Thank you so much. That's a great name. Thank you so much for the follow. Oh, this is so stinking exciting. So yeah, so if you're ever interested in audio work or do producing an audiobook, either as a writer or as a voice, this is really where you get want to get your start. They are, I originally signed on with them and I want to say 2010 and <laughs> welcome to Uh And it's a great place to um, cut your teeth on. So it has on here, it even has uh, how to videos. So there's also ACX University, I think on YouTube, and it teaches you how to read, how to emote, how to create an audiobook from both the reader side and the author side. Happy is a resident scholar and scientist. <gasps> really? Oh, that's fun. As well with this. It is <laughs> actually. And the funny thing is, is that my theme for the library are ghosts. So I'm thinking it, it, it ties in really well, really well. Big love. So yeah, I'm not sure if any of you out there, cause I get that question all the time. How do you become an audiobook narrator? How do you do the audiobooks? And this is the perfect place to get your start because I'll tell you this right now, if you're not sure and you're not sure if you're good enough or if anyone would ever hire you, this is where you learn how to audition, how to, um, how to make a proposal, um, and you can search for what you're actually good at. So I love doing vo the voices, but I'm not always incredibly consistent. It's very hard for me as an audiobook narrator to I have a whole bunch of different characters and I have to jump from person to person to person to person to person to person, to person and I have to remember. So I usually take notes. But if it's one where it has a lot of, there was one that I did that had um, a lot of fantasy characters and to try and pronounce the names and this other language that was written into it and to try to remember the voices, it wasn't my best. But I do really well with in uh, nonfiction. Nonfiction is my jam and it pays really well. So if I was going to go titles accepting auditions, and I can do this because this is a public site. Oh, what we got here? Look at those little ghosties. Oh, little ghosties with hearts. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. Really, we're meant to be. <laughs> so if you're interested, anyone who's watching this, and I actually wanted to make a full video out of this, but I'll just do a quick blurb now. You can find all of these books here for right now are for sale on Amazon. And you can go in and choose. So, so one of my specialties is a Scottish accent. And I've actually done at least two books that have full Scottish accents. And the accents range from going all the way down to Glasgow up to the Upper Hebrides. And so when I'm going on here and I'm looking for, say, an accent style that I really want to look for, or if I really want to use my Hamani, my British voice, I can do, I can search for whichever um, accent that I'm looking for. Or for instance, if I know I really want to do, say, a British book or Pride and Prejudice or a Regency romance, I know uh, about, about, approximately what they'd be looking for. And then I can search it up even by accent that they're looking for. For the most part though, you're going to want to look for one that has your vocal style, your voice age, uh, age and project length. 
if you're new to this, you want something under three hours because you can cut that, you can get that out in a day. 10 hours or more, you want to be on here for at least a year before you attempt those. And I mean on here, not just experience wise. But say I want to go and I want not erotica, let's do LGBTQ. Apply that. I am female. Apply that. You actually want to click any because a lot of times you'll have authors that don't know what they want. But I'm just going to choose these. Nothing. Okay. Okay, so these are straight romances. I really want. Give me a nonfiction. Biographies and memoirs. Sure. I don't know. I actually don't recommend taking a biography or memoir for your first book. Do not do that to yourself. It will kill you. Legit. I stopped reading for about two years after my first um, biography. Mm -mm, not good. So it's basically a site you all could additional work. Yes, exactly. So let me find one just on the main page that's straight for females. Just because I'm reading this. Okay, cognitive beha behavioral therapy. This is absolutely one that I would audition for. So it says here, can complete it in three and a half hours. Perfect. I could get that out easily. Um, project Projected budget. When they say project, PFH, that's per finished hour. So if they're saying that it's going to be about three and a half hours or so, it may take you five to six hours to actually record it, depending on your proficiency. And then you have to edit that down, right? So this, it could be, it could be three hours. It could be four hours. If you're a slow talker, it could be less than that. And then that 50 to 100 is what you're going to put into your proposal. Yes, I'm a big fan. One of my my biggest seller, uh, hands down, is... Um, oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so late. Um, uh, the Meaning of Dreams and Their Sexual Implications. It was, a, it was a, I think, a 10-hour plus book, but even now it's still my biggest seller. Um, so what you would do is you'd come down here and this is where they'll give you, this is not well put together. This is probably self-published. Yeah. Published by. So this will be on Amazon and this is usually your edition script because the people posting it, if it's not pu published by, put on here by a publisher and they're doing it themselves, they automatically think that this is where you're going to put it rather than in the audition, which you should be, there should be a link here for you to download anyways so this is your what you're going to audition with this is where they tell you what what they want so vocal style informed they want you to read this like you already know what you're talking about american they'll give you the accent how old you english nonfiction, that kind of thing and then you can go over here and actually view the title and it tells you how many how many units has it sold what is its rating so you can decide whether or not it's worth your time but if you're just starting out, audition for everything. My first book was I got hired purely because I was Canadian and still had a Canadian accent. And the book did not sell well. It just didn't. Um, let's see here. Mafia Daddies. No. Um, can I find one on here? Search by relevance. There you go. Best selling. Yeah, that looks like it would be best-selling. <clears throat> okay. So here's, again, 11.8 hours. This this one here will easily take you, uh, with your just starting out, a month and a half, if not two months. Now, once you get better at it, it won't take as long, but at least that. Because we can already tell that this is a fantasy. We can already tell that there will be different voices. There will be actual voice acting in this one. It's not just pure narration like the nonfiction books. So it's going to be a lot more than just 11.8 hours. But again, that 100 per 200, that's a really good deal if you can get it. But this is where a lot of people make the mistake. It says 100 to 200 per finished hour. You have to audition and put in your proposal 
always tell them how long you've been doing it so that they know how proficient you are and how quickly you can get it out to them. If you can only ask for the 200, if you can get it out within their requested date. New question. Yes. <laughs> See here, male or female. They don't know what they want, but they'll take either. Oh, down here. Dual narration. Oh, that'd be so much fun. I have done, actually, I've got another site that I can send you over to. Uh, I got all of my voice acting from imitation. So I started with imitating voices and imitating the way that they, um, they spoke and their cadence. And that's how I came up with my voices. But a lot of audiobooks don't actually have voices. A lot of them don't. Um, so even if you, I have a lot of people who say, well, I really want to do it, but I can't do voices. That's okay. A lot of them don't require voice acting, but the voice acting is like the best part. So the site that I'm on here, it's called Casting Call Club. When you look at it, it's a voice, for, it's a site for voice actors, but they have a class. They have a school. Um, let me see if I can find, oh wait, I got to look at this on another. Oh, I can't show you this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't show you my desktop. Um, let me just pull up the actual class page. Um, I have taken a bunch of their courses. My favorite was their improv course, which we did over Zoom, but it's a lot of fun. You feel like you're the star of a comedy club for a night. Um, Casting Call Club Classics. Okay, do I have to log in? I don't really want to. Okay, we'll log in. Okay, so I'll just bring this over here. Um, whoa, I can't see what you see. There we go. So this is my profile on Casting Call Club. Let me find if I can find it. Oh, come down, come down. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Hang on. Oh, it won't let me say it. Uh, find it. Um, this is also where I get a lot of my um, filler gigs. Uh, filler gigs are when I have audiobooks and I'm between audiobooks or they're, I'm waiting for them to sign off on what I've put out. I can, you can go on to Casting Call Club and this is also a great site for people who are just starting. Because again, it teaches you how to audition. Um, and it takes people from all backgrounds. You do not have to have, you do not have to be start out. You, no one starts out a professional. But let me just, ah, oh, why are you being, mind you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do this here because then I can't see the chat. There we go. Sorry, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. I've got so many pages open. Audiobook production. Where's my voice acting stuff? Ah. I learned to voice act through imitation. That was that was my only secret. Purely imitation. And then I would take characters. And there's a lot of sites where you can choose like monologues or pieces from books and just read them as different characters. And that's really a, the only way that I picked it up. I can't find it. Okay, I can't find it, but I will post it in the description. Um, in the description, for the audiobooks, you record just the script first. Get a, to get a, do you record just the script first to get hired for it? With the, okay, this, Okay, so, so for this one, I'm looking for either a dual narration, which is really hard to get hold of, but if you can, it's so much fun, or a female narrator, narrator who's very good at narrating male voices as well. Honor the heroine is snarky, capable, warm, and sarcastic. My preference is dual narration with two, because that's the most fun. Um, you have to audition for everything. So when you say, do you record just the script first to get hired? you're only going to read them what they give you. So this here, they've given me the script. 
this script, this entire piece is what I'm going to send them. You'll slate it first. Um, slate it. Hello, this is... Hello, this is Sared reading for the part of Honor, or reading for the title of Forbidden Honor, written by Mae Dawson. And then you'd go, and that's how you slate it, and then you'd go into the actual thing here. Um, but yeah, so for... Let me see if I can find it on here. I don't know if they still have... It shouldn't still be listed. But it might, it might, it might. Email. I'm looking for the Regency one. The Regency one was very, very tough. Um, you will get some erotica on here. Let me tell you, erotica is very hard to narrate, and I don't say that with like no pun intended. It's very, very tricky to narrate. Um, if you are not explicitly comfortable making those sounds or saying those words where everyone and possibly your grandparents will hear I would not recommend them um, there are some really great sites and Facebook groups where I had one where I thought I'd be okay with it and this was when I was much younger I thought I would be okay with it because you know, I read it in my head so of course I can read it out loud that's never the case. Um, but I had signed on for it. I'd, I'd gotten hired for it. And I got into it. And I'm like, I can't do this. So with the audiobook community, it's not like others where it's it's you're fighting for your life. It's really, really open. And like, I couldn't do this. So I passed it on to another narrator who I know specializes in this. And then she gave me something of hers. No, I love talking about it because I wish that someone had taken the time for me. Okay. <laughs> so, you know how I got into audiobooks is the most absolutely ridiculous, stupid thing you're going to hear. But it's purely a... Um, not even a millennial, because I'm not a millennial. But it was just absolutely ridiculous that I thought that this would work. When I was in... I graduated college that was fine didn't like what I was doing so I went back to university um, a different university and while I'm in university I'm realizing that um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life I have no idea what do you do with some degree in psychology and social anthropology what the fuck other than coming home depressed every single day it just wasn't a good fit um, and, but I had always had my podcast that I had, that I had kept up with, with reading my Buffy fan fiction and Harry Potter and that. And it was through reading one of my, um, one of my stories on there that one of my fo followers said, well, why don't you just read audiobooks? And I'm going, no shit. That's exactly what I should do. <laughs> so... So I get on and I was going to a very, uh, shall we say, well-known, very well-known university uh, at the time with a very well-stocked library. So I thought, of course, the exact thing that I should do is um, email the head of Random House Audio Canada, the publishing company. The, uh, which one for, oh, this one. Uh, so I should absolutely email the president of, of this huge publishing company and say, Hey, I'd like to work into audiobooks. Can you hire me? <laughs> Not in those words, but basically those words. And, um, they were very nice. He was a very nice guy. And rather than slough me off and uh, and say, you know, get lost, kid, he pointed me over to ACX. Um, but ACX at the time was only accepting American talent and was not accepting um, Canadian or anywhere outside of the U.S. They just weren't accepting narrators. 
So I lied. <laughs> I lied and I have family who live in Buffalo and and yeah. <laughs> and I said I live in Buffalo. <laughs> Give them that address and and uh I've been working uh working on ACX to supplement my income ever since. And honestly, if you can if you can get the gigs, it's a few books every few months months and yeah <laughs> so that's, yeah so that was that was how I actually got started and he was the one who told me about ACX and he what ACX is um, a way station for the audiobook industry when you're first starting out this is where you go to learn how, to hone your craft to get good at it to get quick at it to understand how it how it all works how your setup should be working um, this, the microphone that I'm using right now, is not actually my, in my sound studio. It's just outside of it. Um, but this is the best place to start because you have to audition for every piece. And you'll learn, well, that didn't sound right or it could have been better. They don't always give you feedback, but some of them do, especially if they're self-published. When you start out on here, you will get, you will not get per finished hour. I can guarantee you that. Um unless you've been doing it for years and years and years, you will get royalties, royalty share. Okay. Royalty share is where you're getting sense. That's exactly it. It teaches you the lessons you need to learn. Um, but for instance, if you did this one, eight plus hours, you're getting a royalty share on this. So say it, well, let's see how much it sells for. So, for a paperback, this is the price you're going off of. $10, $10.99 paperback. Oh, sorry, but this is Canadian. $10.99 Canadian paperback. You're looking at probably around $14, $15 for the audiobook. Then you'll get cents off of that. So it doesn't really, you have to do a lot of these. But they're perfect because you're not taking any money away from anyone. So you're not taking money away from the self-publisher. You're not taking it away from the author, that kind of thing. So they don't mind giving you a chance. Because if you screw up or if they want to go with someone else, they always can. Um, but yeah, when it says published by, that means this is published, uh, self-published. I would, if you're going to do audiobooks, you definitely need the equipment. But you don't need the Cadillacs of everything. Um, my, the setup that I upgraded to, um, and I still have it and it's still the one I use. My original one was a Logitech. Oh God, it was awful. Um, it was a Logitech um, microphone, but it was one that was attached to the headphones and it was all one piece, like a gaming headset. Um, it was not good, but that's what I use for my podcast. And as soon as I got hired on here for my first book, I went out and got a Rode NT90, um, N91. NT1A, that's it. And it comes as like a little set, as a kit. And it's what I've been using ever since. Well, I've, I've upgraded. Um, I upgraded to this. I had another one before this, but it, uh, that was just a pure lucky find at like Value Village. But yeah, so this is the set that I still use now. And you want to go with a, uh, cordero uh, cor cardioid, card, the heart one. Oh, right there. This one. This is what you want. Um, what I'm using right now is, um, I use the beacon mic to do these, but it's a, how to explain, um, it's a shotgun mic. So it's not the best for doing audiobooks because it doesn't give you different depths. I can I talk at this volume or I could talk back here and the corduroy mic doesn't do that. Anyways. So yeah, if you guys ever have any questions about how to do audiobooks or how to get you started or acting classes, voice acting classes, I very strongly recommend, I don't, uh, again, I will put a link up 
in the um in the description. Da, da, da. Let's just go to this. I wonder if I'm trying to find the actual site. Casting call club. Classes. Oh, voice school. That's the one. I knew I had it saved. Oh, that's right. That's right. They changed the name. So this is, they're called closing credits now. And they have classes for everyone. Thank you so, so much, Books, for, for rating and for being here. And it's been incredibly awesome. And thank you so much. I cannot express to you how much it means to have gotten to talk to more people. Because <laughs> Ghost, we love you. But it's just you and I a lot of the time. <laughs> So yeah, if anyone on here is watching this and you would like to, you want, it has voice classes, acting classes, um, editing classes, um, uh, just everything, everything, courses. Um, and it's taught by some really cool people and it's so much fun. So I've done all of the voice acting ones and I did the improv twice. Oh, but this, they have a new narration one. That's new. And the characters one is new. Yeah, they've got a bunch of new things. Oh, this is John. And I did the business one. I didn't say that. I didn't say that, Ghost. You mean so much. <laughs> I want a sword be free. What? No, I didn't mean. Oh, oh I plan on letting the switch. That's awesome. Ghosty, don't do that to me. You know I love you. We've been through so much together. <laughs> but yeah, I would reckon... Oh, frick. This guy's teaching a class? Ugh. Ugh. All right. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little dirt, and I hope no one else sees this. This fool right here. Fool. He works in New York. He has an audiobook publishing company. Um, he's a bit of a turd. Oh my god. <laughs> I was in the improv class with this guy and I had such a hard... Oh, no, it wasn't improv. It was one of our business ones. The traumatic... Uh, the trauma arc especially. Which trauma arc? We've been through so many. The Inuyasha one? Good night, y'all. Good to meet you. Meet you soon. I'm making the bond stronger. This is true. Good night, books. Thank you again so much. And holy shit, it's 1130. Ghost. I'm blaming you for this. Um, okay, so this will not get its links tonight because I've got to go to bed because I work tomorrow morning very early. Um, but I will post all of the links to all of this stuff. Oh, the improv with June. He was very, very good. So much fun. Um, I'll post all the, um, links to all the things that I mentioned in the description at some point, somewhere, sometime. <laughs> we were absolutely talking about Inuyasha. Oh, are you a fan? Are you a fan? Because I, I cannot find another genuine Inuyasha fan that went through the same trauma that I went through. So I would love to find... Recently finished all the eps on Netflix. Inuyasha lied to us. Tricked us. It did. I was traumatized. And then they said that it was fake. And I'm like, no, you bastards. Give us pain. Okay, so happy nightmares. This was what happened with Inuyasha. I don't know, because you said that you just finished it. So, okay. Back when it was originally airing on TV, and this is years ago, like I was in my teens, so this is a long time ago. Friends and your sister all loved it when I was growing up. No. Okay, so I'm going to tell the story anyway. Because <laughs> someone else has to suffer with ghosts as I tell the story, go through the story again. So, Inuyasha was one of those series, immunity for no spoilers because Netflix doesn't have all apps. Huh? Eh? What about early episodes? Have you watched early episodes? Shut up, Ghost. <laughs> ghost is laughing at me. That's not nice. Yeah, that's that's actually probably. Although it's not a spoiler because the thing, the reason I'm I'm irritated is that they erased the episode. And that's what bothers me. There was an episode, uh, an arc that something happened. Can't even invent nightmares. 
oh, trust. This trauma has been so long lived that it will. Ooh, let me show you my the screen that just came up. Okay, this is going to be a flash because I don't know whose um, artwork that this is. Did it get good? What was it? I don't know if you saw that or not. Do you know who that is? <laughs> there is an artist. Oh. There's an artist, and they're still posting stuff on, I want to say, Twitter. It's, or is it, I can't remember. Sarah isn't spoiling. She's talking about an episode that was original to the director and was deleted because it's not canon. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And it bugged the shit out of me. Traumatized. Assholes. Okay, I unmuted. Hey? So can I tell you why I'm upset now? <laughs> okay, so here's what happened. We were talking about, there's another anime out there called Spirit Pact. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it. It's, it's a different one. It's also, it was originally Chinese, but they did a Japanese version of it. And with Spirit Pact, it got two seasons. Netflix has only the first 50 episodes. Okay, so yeah, you'd be fine with this. So with Spirit Pact, they were, they had got two seasons done. They were going to go for a third, but the actual original writer of the manga pulled out and would not allow them to continue on because the director tried to take the, the, the anime in a completely different direction than the manga. And the writer said, absolutely not. So they had a falling out. So of course the show got discontinued. Well, with Inuyasha... While they were coming up with the manga, um, the manga, of course, takes a lot longer to come out than the anime does. And so there was a time, a, a stint, where the anime outran the manga. And so in order to continue f uh, filling in the slots, they had to come up with what we call filler episodes. And filler episodes are just not strictly part of what's actually happening. They're just... in. <laughs> You might know the monkey episode with the three monkeys um, for Niyasha. That's one of my favorite filler episodes, but they always had it. Any episode that doesn't have Naraku in it is usually a filler, filler episode. So that they started doing those. Yes. Yes, it absolutely happened to Sailor Moon. So but what Inuyasha did was Inuyasha... At the very beginning, very, very beginning, um, they were airing it. And what the director or production or whoever decided to do was that, well, we don't know how it's going to continue. We need to fill this slot. So we're going to continue on with the way we think that it will go. And so what they ended up doing at a later date was it wasn't anything to do with the actual plot. We'll just, you know, fill her with the characters. This one, they tried to continue with the actual plot without letting, without <laughs> consulting, really, the original writer. And so they created this episode, and it has stuck with me my entire life. Inuyasha was my first true anime, because um, it wasn't prime time and you had to stay up late for it, that kind of thing. And so in the episode, it has... Inuyasha has this nightmare brought on by Naraku where Kikyo and Kagome are being tortured and Inuyasha has to choose between Kagome and Kikyo. But Kikyo is actually Naraku in disguise because he does that. And in this episode, Kagome gives herself up. She sacrifices herself so that Inuyasha doesn't have to choose. Now, this does become a theme later on about Kagome's I'll never make him choose, never make him choose. But this was one where she's like, I don't think he would choose me, but I'm not going to make him choose. And so she sacrificed herself in it, and Inuyasha, even still, ended up trying to save Kikyo rather than Kagome. And I have gone through... All of the episodes, I have looked for it on Funimation and Crunchyroll and Netflix and, and um, 
Amazon Prime and all that, I have looked everywhere for this episode and cannot find it. And finally, I had to go looking for it. And they're like, oh, yeah, uh, it, that wasn't real. What? That wasn't real? Like, fuck. The fuck you say? <laughs> like, I was traumatized by that. But yeah, so we were talking about how sometimes animes really do venture off course with the mangas for unknown reasons. But, well, we know the reasons, but weird reasons. So I guess with the Spirit Pact, the one, I think, don't take me, don't quote me on this one, but I think the rumor that I heard was that the director for Spirit Pact tried to make it so that, uh, he was either trying to make it so that there was a love triangle, which we don't fucking do love triangles in this house. F no. Um, it was either a love triangle or he was trying to make it so that it wasn't a gay romance, which Spirit Pact, that's just what it is. Like, there's no disguising it as main theme. Actually, it's a lot like this in that they're almost like kind of married. I don't know. Um, funny too, though, because it's not very off course from what I can already see. And that was the thing is that's why I always thought it was real because it stuck so close. So I'm like, did they ask the author? And that's what she said. I can't. I'm not sure. Stay tuned to the manga, guys. Changing never works. Never works. It's true. It's what he changed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if you... He ungayed it. That's exactly it. He tried to make it into um, either a romance or to cut out any kind of romance or closeness altogether. Wait, what got ungayed? So, Spirit Pact. Uh, let me pull it up here. Oh, you guys don't care. Um, yeah, so Spirit Pact, it's a manga. It's still ongoing. Um, it's a really good read. Really good. The anime is not, in my opinion, as good. It's very, very choppy. And you're constantly, like, you know how anime is, it's like, okay, we're going to switch this scene. This is no scene, 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 scene. There's no tradition transitions between scenes. So it's quite choppy. Um, and so sometimes even hard to follow. But yeah, so Spirit Pact is a lot of fun. Rest in peace, Spirit Pact. It's, it's, it's true. It's true. And it's it's too bad because it has a really fun... I, The character in it, the main character, he's so much like Wei Wu Zhen and Len Zhen that I can't even. I was going back and re-watching it and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> this is where um, uh, Mo Sheng Tongshu got the idea for Wei Wu Zhen. You cannot watch that and tell me that's not Wei Wu Zhen when he first comes back. Like, facts. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what I was just talking about, um, the Grand Master of Demonic Cultivation is now for sale in all bookstores all over the world. Can we keep talking about anime on Wednesday? Fuck yes. Can we go to bed now? <laughs> Anyone else want to go to bed? Anyone else sleepy? It's 11.44. I'm not getting this up on YouTube tonight. Because Sarah, you need to sleep. I knew you need to sleep. I need to sleep because I have to go and be a customer service professional tomorrow. <sighs> that's, that's not fair because I do. I love our clients, but it's just we... we I, I arrived tired. <laughs> Is, I don't even, I wish I had, I wish I could put my things up, but I can't. I have things. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for calling it. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you so, so much for joining me and Ghost and Yui. And we will hopefully, hopefully see you on Wednesday at 8. I will follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Sared Noble, S-E-R-D-D, -D, Noble. Can't remember how to spell it at the moment. Um, on Twitch, and all the links will be in all the descriptions and all the stuff. And follow me on YouTube because that's where you get the old episodes and all the chatter. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining me and sticking around from the raid because that's so awesome. And uh, yeah, so good night, everyone. And we will see you again soon. Okay, I'm going to bed now.